Grab a bottle or snap a tab. It's time for Antebrewum, South Georgia Beer Report. South Georgia's first craft beer podcast with Ryan and Danny. This month, Ryan and Danny sit down with Jay Rice of Georgia Beer Company, soon to be Valdosta's first craft brewery. They talk about when the brewery will open, their tap room, annoying dogs and kids, and much, much more. Jay Rice offers advice to aspiring brewers and gets through a round of Cask Me Another like a champ. Everyone plows through a Five Points Fine Wine and Spirits Oktoberfest Rocktoberfest Six Minute Six Pack Review, and Ryan melts some hearts with a snowman themed craft beer dad joke of the month. Cheers. Hey everybody, welcome to Antebrewum, South Georgia Beer Report. I'm Danny. And I'm Ryan, and you have reached South Georgia's first, best, and only podcast about craft beer. And we are very excited today because it is our one-year anniversary. We have our first returning guest. Our first new returning guest, sort of. But we have Jay Rice from Georgia Beer Company. How you doing? Hey. All right. All right. Welcome, Jay Rice. Thank you. So we are excited to learn about all that's happening in the uh, Valdosta's uh, soon-to-be brewery. But first, as always, Danny, what you drinking? I am drinking Red Brick Zest in Show. Saison with some citrus zest in it. I just returned from a trip to Savannah. Mm -hmm. Went to the store and sought out um, as many packaged Georgia beers as you and I have not had. Is that good? And it turned out you had this one, but I I had that one. So too bad. What do you think of it? Not bad. Yeah, light, easy. Kind of interesting. Summer saison. I think that's. I think I got summer it earlier saison. in the summer. So, Jay Rice, what you got? Uh, this is a fig sour. I, I'm not sure. Of the oh, I don't even one. think I told you what it was. Orpheus Sycophantes. Oh. oh, I like that Orpheus. beer. That's on tap somewhere. I think at Blue Pub Cafe. Blue it, Cafe. I had it at Blue Cafe. They did an Orpheus it, tasting. It's good. It's. Uh, uh, I'm not a huge sour fan. Uh, so it's 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 kind of. I don't want to say like a, a beginner sour, but uh, it's very easy to drink for mm-hmm. it to be a sour and me not be a sour fan. It's unique because it's, um, even though it's slightly sour, it's still dark and malty yeah. and the dark fruits help with that. Yeah, I think they call it like a fall sour and it's, a, it's, it's not that super vinegary, yeah. it's, it's, a more, it's a fuller sour. The figs are good too. I've got, I've got a fig tree or I have access to a fig tree. I want to make a fig mead. Hmm. I figured that would be good. We uh, we have had a few variations of this as well, like Blanc Dior and mm-hmm. Barrel Aged One, yeah, and stuff like that. that Orpheus is always they're pretty they're pretty straight with their sours. And nobody cares what you're drinking, Ryan. So okay, moving right on. Moving no, right on. Uh, what are you drinking? <laughs> this makes me sad. I brought this special for us, and we're not even going to talk about it. No, I'm kidding. Go, knock yourself out. Okay, I guess I will. The name of this beer is To Dan. And to me. To Dan. Well, no, not to you. To another Dan. I shouldn't make that joke. <laughs> <laughs> it's by Wild Heaven. It's a collaboration with Cigar City, Max's Loggers, Woodfire Grill and Brewery, and Mazert Brewing Company. And, of course, this is a beer brewed in homage to Dan. You know his last name? Rosen or Rosen? Ro- yeah. Um, he was the brewer at Mazert Brewing Company, which is not... Uh, an official brewing company yet, but they did a lot of homebrew competitions and working they, on it. And they, yeah, they're working on it. And uh, yeah, yeah, they've uh, they they're kind of like, famous for. They're the, almost like the most legendary not brewery. <laughs> they're kind of like Wake, Wakefield was um, a few years ago before he opened up his brewery in Florida. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, um, and so it is a coconut. Um, Double IPA, and to finish the story about Dan Rosen, he he died in a tragic uh, hit and run accident earlier this year. So uh, a few breweries put together this beer, and uh, I believe proceeds go to his family. Or, um, does that sound right? Something like that. Yeah. Something something to support him. So kind of a tragic uh, tragic event, but uh, it's a fine beer, and it's it's for a good cause. So Wild Heaven to Dan. And good. I love coconut. 
Yeah, and it yeah, works surprisingly well. Tasty. This, uh, sounds delicious. Yeah, if you need to take, take, take a, a try. Um, and to keep the uh, kind of sad train rolling here in the south, we hope everybody's doing okay post Irma. Yeah. Um, Aunt the Broom and crew survived okay. Oh, man, Ryan cool. lost power for quite a while. Sour Carl lost power for quite a while. Um, I didn't lose power for some reason. My house in the historic district continues to prove to be a fortress against power outages, but I did lose two trees and a big chunk of fence. Yeah, and I think any you know loss of property is no big deal compared to our friends in Florida and some of our friends in Texas who lost way more than that in their homes or, or unfortunately in some cases uh, yeah, their life. For, can't forget about the, that. Texas hurricane yeah, before yeah. Irma, just because we all got hit. But uh, we hope everybody, all our fans out there, all our listeners uh, made it through okay without uh, too much uh, troubles. And, uh, you know, we're thinking thinking of everybody else who is going through stuff. And so, and lastly, we bid we're farewell. Gonna, are we going to go ahead and do all the sad news yeah, first? We yeah, bid, we've bid well. farewell to our, pretty much our favorite um, tap beer place in yeah. town, Craft on Draft. Has closed for good. Yeah, it's it's a super bummer. You know, Ed and Siobhan were great people, you know, friends of the show, uh, just good people in general, brought good beer, love good beer, and, you know, we wish them best in whatever their future endeavors are. And, I'm sure we'll run into them in the future. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh, yeah. And But uh, they left their mark, and, and we, we appreciate everything they did for, for South Georgia beer. We're definitely... Let's all pour some Bummed. craft beer out. There we go, fallen, homies. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the house. Nah, that's what I was about to say. The cats will. The drink cats it. will enjoy that. Everybody, check Facebook because the moment Jay Rice sat down at my table, the now famous potato of the podcast cat stepped right into his lap. Yeah. We're hoping she he'll did. make an appearance today. And right? Larry, yeah. she, she, and we have a new potentially anti broom cat, new famous podcast cat. Now at the house, I have potato and. A new cat named Pinecone. Pinecone. Potato and Pinecone. We're going to make Anta Broom shirts. One on the back will say hashtag Team Potato and one will say hashtag Team Pinecone. And I think we're going to do an Anti Broom Georgia Beer Company collaboration with the first ever Pinecone potato beer. <laughs> it's going to be... Hint, hint. <laughs> it's, it's going to be, it's gonna be kind of like gin and vodka mixed in beer form. <laughs> <laughs> Pinecone. Oh boy, that sounds awesome. Yeah. Oh, we're going to do a potato, vodka, and gin barrel aged beer made with pine cones and potatoes that doesn't this sound awesome yeah great <laughs> <laughs> all right thanks to uh daniel opal as always uh for uh the awesome design and logo and to five points fine wine experience continuing yeah. to bring we have a slew of oktoberfest beers to try later more on that also go back to our episode last year yeah and we're really going to talk about oktoberfest beers I think we have all different episode. ones this year, don't we? Didn't you get different ones this year pretty much? I didn't look. I have no idea. Maybe, I maybe, I, I maybe this one. I haven't one. seen this one before, and I, 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 I bought some the other day, and it's it's delicious. That's good. It's, I'm, it's I'm excited good. to try some of this and multi of course, goodness. Uh, Patreon, though, um, I got to hit my mom up again because she actually, uh, they're all chuckling because of my word choice there. Sorry, mom. Uh, <laughs> She actually donated, even though we split it into the monthly Patreon thing, she actually donated like a chunk of money oh, okay. for one year. So that might be up now. That's right, because it's it our up. one year so anniversary. Thanks, as we always say, to Danny's mom for being at Patreon. Danny's mom is... She might not be anymore. I need oh. to check. We'll still thank But Berg is still the there, and it was Berg's birthday yesterday. Hey, happy birthday. Hey, happy birthday, Berg. Celebrate by upping your donation one or two dollars. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. He's a he's a but the maybe. most famous Cigar City Raider of all time, and like the so world's number one Raider of Berliner Weisses. And beyond that, he's far. like the, one of the nicest guys I've ever met. Oh yeah, super so, cool. We appreciate him. Who also had to evac because of the hurricane. <sighs> I think a lot of people did. Yeah. Area. So, well, good. All right. Well, thanks for all our sponsors, and thank you for be- uh, listening through kind of three or four sad things. But now we're on to bigger and better things, <laughs> and of course. The one, the only, Jay Rice from Georgia Beer Company is here. Thank you. And uh, so I'm just going to go out. I'm going to ask the million-dollar question first. Of course. Hold on. What? Oh, go, go ahead. Go, you go ahead. You're going to interrupt my million-dollar question. <laughs> you, you, you ask the million-dollar question, and then I have a follow-up. Okay. The million-dollar question is when? When. Of course it is. 
So uh, this is where I'm gonna uh, uh, um, tongue in cheek, just jokingly razz you guys a little bit. Okay. Um, if if I if I was more technologically inclined or had more time this week, I would take the quote from last year's episode. We're gonna <laughs> break ground in 45 days. <laughs> so it's been one year. Any ground broken? <laughs> That's a negative. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, when, so what? What? What's the plan? Uh, we actually are having a groundbreaking ceremony, though. Ooh, Ooh all right. Not, not until November, unfortunately. But uh, so uh, here is the series of events. All right. We are. Uh, I have to think about it for a second. So everything has been approved. Uh, we have successfully acquired funding. So everything is a go. Now, the next step is renovations of the downtown building. Uh, By the way, pictures of that are still linked on the podcast information on YouTube and Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So there's, obviously, there's, there's red tape that you must go through in order to uh, do these renovations. So we start with... Uh, a pre uh, uh, so general contractors are are in the process are going to be in the process of bidding for the job to renovate the building. Right. Uh, that will happen over the next uh, few weeks. Um, we actually have a pre bid meeting Tuesday. Okay. And so general contractors and uh, the Lowndes uh, Development Authority and uh, I believe chances are if you're listening to this the day it drops, which probably will be Tuesday, yeah. they're at yeah. their meeting. Yeah, yeah. we will probably be at the meeting. Yep. Um, I believe uh, our architect uh, from IPG will be there as well, and uh, anybody who wants to, to bid on uh, the project. Uh, so we'll have a pre-bid, pre-bid meeting and sit down and everything, and after that, uh, they will then begin the bidding process, and general contractors are open to throw their bids in. Can I? Yeah. Of course. I have, uh, please, you have experience I have, in that? Uh, please do not let Danny build your brewery. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we uh, and, and that and that you know there is a by law there's a specific time that that yeah, has to be over. Of course. Uh, and have you guys? Um, I know w- what the listeners may not realize is that we know Chris and Shay Rex like personally as well, and so we talk a lot behind the scenes. And you guys have talked a lot about how. Um, and I know this even from just residential things. When you're going to do construction, there's a lot of like permits and zoning and right. stuff that has to happen that takes time. Has that happened yet, or is that happening after you get the bids and blah blah blah? Um, as far as uh, sort of, uh, th- there is certain permitting uh, that occurs during construction. That's not something that we will be a part of. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as far as like ha- getting the plans drawn up, having those approved by the city. Uh, all of that stuff has happened. Cool. Sweet. So, so yeah. that the, there's nothing holding us back now. Um, so, between the time of the last day to submit your general contractors to submit bids, to uh, uh, we have a groundbreaking ceremony November 9th. I believe. Awesome. Uh, construction may start mm-hmm. before that. You know, uh, we're not going to stop it, but the official groundbreaking ceremony will be. November 9th. That's a Thursday? That should be a Tuesday. November 9th is a Thursday. Okay, Thursday. 7th is a Tuesday. Okay. <laughs> Thursday it is then. <laughs> Very good. Yep. That's, so, that's cool. But what about... Uh, right. you guys ordered, so, oh, so, keep going. So, yeah, yeah. So, I have success. Have I successfully dodged your question yet? Well, no, I mean... <laughs> oh, yeah, we never... Uh, I mean, I'm looking for like... I mean... Construction, you figure, is going to certainly take a few months. Right, right. It's so the other, I'm thinking like probably halfway through next year. Or? I'm, uh, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say you know, it's very difficult. It's very difficult to pin down a date. Almost impossible. Yeah, yeah. And, and, it's, and, it, and it's very frustrating. But uh, You guys might start construction and then those... Future yeah. hurricanes that are chilling in the Atlantic right now. Yeah, and, 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 and hey, you know, things down. like yeah, that. Come this, on, you know, there's there's all kind of things yeah. that could happen. Uh, <clears throat> not to mention licensing. That's, that's actually going to be my question. That's, since it's I, a whole other hurdle. I have a little bit of experience in the biz 
have you guys ordered equipment? Have you applied for Not uh, state and federal brewing licenses and that the, stuff? You, you cannot do those things until you've passed a certain point gotcha. or done, a, done certain things. Yeah. So it's... Just waiting. Yeah. yeah. So, and if those processes are slowed down at all, then that will slow down the day. Anyway, I'm thinking uh, early spring. That's good. Early spring, uh, that's not a definite... I'm going to plan for fall. That's a, <laughs> uh, early spring, you know, if, if things don't go according to plan, maybe late spring, early summer. That'd be all right. Awesome. Well, we're talking about I will be first there, there's no, no hurdles in the way, and now we're, we're good to go. And, and I think the other thing that you guys have been doing, which is real smart, at least in my opinion, is you're still doing events where people can have your beer. Mm-hmm. You're kind of building up your name, building up the logo. I know you guys do all sorts of community stuff. And like, so if you, if you want to try some Georgia beer company beer, it's out no, it's there. not, you can get it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's it, the, the, the official stuff's coming, but it's not like it's a secret stuff. And I know you brought some of it for yeah. us to try today, mm-hmm. which we're pumped about, but like, don't, you know, go ahead and, and be looking for special events. And there was an event out. Well, I'll go ahead and ask you about that. Cause didn't you all do something for Harvey or something like a special event or going to do one? It's going to, going to do one. We haven't done it yet. Uh, I'm pretty sure I posted it on our Facebook. September 30th. It's called okay. the hurricane hoedown. Um, uh, farm on in Cordell. Yeah. It's, like it's, uh, uh, there may be a lot of people that are familiar with uh, gin Creek that's in Moultrie. And it's just like a place, a venue where you can like, uh, have weddings and stuff. It's similar to that. It's called Fritz farm. Okay. And they are hosting uh, this event and they want us to come out and, uh, you know, serve beer at it. And, uh, at first it was, uh, I can't even remember what they called it to begin with, but it was the, like, it was like beer, burgers and brats. That's, yeah, that's yeah, 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 yeah. Beer, yeah. burgers and brats. And, like and, and, and when these hurricanes hit, then it transitioned <laughs> to hurricane hoedown. I'm glad it did. You know, it's, yeah, that's it, awesome. It's a very, very good thing. Yeah. All, all of the ticket sales to this event, are, will will be going to uh, the victims of Hurricane Harvey and Irma. Now Irma, yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's awesome, and you know, so stuff like that. You seem you seem to be doing that every few months, where I, there's a Georgia Beer Company event, something like that. So, so if you can't wait till early spring, go out and try the beer and start talking about it and getting up. I know whenever I talk about um, Georgia Beer Company out in the community, people are, people are getting excited about it. And I think most people by now about Austin certainly. Are, They've heard they're they're ready, so that's a it happened to me thing. Uh, at a restaurant. I was wearing my GBC shirt, and somebody came up. And mm-hmm. like, Are you a part of that brewery? What's going on? Yeah. Um, and then uh, random interjection because we were talking about brewery opening timelines and delays and problems. Um, our guests from last month, Pretoria Fields, posted on Facebook. They're bumping their grand opening is going to be uh, ambitiously late October. Yeah, as opposed to I think that's just uh, kind October of normal. first. The good news the, is probably normal by opening it now, hurricane. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean the hurricane. But the good news is opening at this point, you won't have to mess with the tour stuff and, and that stuff, and you yeah. can just yes. open the door. We can go and have a plant without worrying about all that other stuff. And I think that that you can certainly change your beer your your business model beer model and uh, <laughs> business model beer, beer, beer models beer yeah. model. <laughs> PFC has a uh, sponsored ad running on Facebook. Um, that they're hiring. So anyone listening in the Albany area, Albany area, Albany. If you want a job? Uh, hit them up. Good job. Cool. All right. So well, uh, well, so they could potentially be the the first brewery in Georgia to open since the laws changed. Maybe I'm not I don't sure know if there's been because it brewery. seems like a brewery. If I was every day I would in be, Atlanta, I would, I, would be, uh, <laughs> I would be I would be advertising that. Yeah. That's kind of cool. That is kind of cool because yeah. I haven't heard about any new ones in Atlanta. Of course, there seems to be. There was a new one, Savannah, working out. What was it? Two ties. Two ties, yeah. Um, and I think that's that's pretty neat, considering it's this, this far south. Yeah. I would definitely say, yeah, we're the first one to open since this change. Yeah. And and, and and dig that. This might get off subject a little bit. Uh, we're masters na- of that. Na- na- now that this law has changed, which is a great thing. It's a wonderful, oh, yeah. wonderful, mm-hmm. wonderful thing. Mm-hmm. Wonderful thing. Uh, I think Georgia is going to not only see uh, a lot more breweries now, but explode. you're going to start seeing a lot of nano breweries, yeah. which is not a thing in Georgia, really. Yeah. You know, you have brew pubs and you have microbreweries, but nano breweries hasn't really been a thing because you couldn't survive in the in the. Lo- oh, no way you could survive without law. Take a tour of my right. ten gallon system. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, you, it, I wouldn't put it out of the realm of possibility that there 
a lot of these small towns will start having their own their own little yeah. groups. Oh, totally, you know? totally. And that's totally cool. I can't wait for that to happen. Yeah, it will be, it will be so much different when you can just serve to your community and survive and, yeah. make, and make money. Yep. Um, and that just Georgia laws just totally made that an impossibility. Yeah. I did get another laugh. Um, to, to well, it wasn't your guys' fault, but uh, a, a news some news place posted an article or something about you guys, and it said learn about um, the first brewery. The first brewery south of Macon, or something like that, and I was like, "Not true." <laughs> yes, <laughs> it, that wasn't yeah. your guys' fault. That was whatever the news people said. Yeah, and, and that was something that we were striving at one point, but it's now we have Albany and, and Columbus, and my, and my, Omaha, Savannah. Yeah, I mean, I think even like, I mean, it, 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 you know, there's kind of like in Georgia, you got kind of like sliced up, or like there's Middle Georgia. Yeah. There really is not any breweries. Coastal Georgia, which is a little different, and then on Columbus, you got you know West Georgia. Yeah, it all depends on how you look at it. Yeah. You know, being from here, I've always considered this place. And this might seem a little conceited, but you know, Valdosta more south than any of the other oh, for sure. southern regions in Georgia, which is technically not that true. But hey, you know, <laughs> it, 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 in reality, it's neither here nor there. You know, we're all kind of <laughs> in it together. Yeah, oh, yeah absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. There's be plenty of beer drinkers for everybody. You know, Danny and me still yeah. here. I can always say I can see the GBC building from my house. I know that's gonna be trouble. That's awesome. All right, uh, You're gonna be, Ryan's gonna be visiting even more. <laughs> this is true, and I'll probably be staying over more. It's probably like too. So, um, well, let's go ahead and crack some of your beers. All we'll right. Keep talking about them. Can you uh, grab that one over there that yes. uh, set out on accident and left it? So, uh, J Rice brought. Four different uh, GBC beers, which I'm super pumped to try. And he brought the two I've been most pumped to try, which are the Pecan Porter, oh, yeah, Pecan Porter, and the uh, Shandy Peach Shandy. I know you guys talked about, and or uh, Chris talked about that last time, and uh, I said, "Boy, you need to bring that back next time you are yeah. on." And sure enough, you did. So, what do you want to do first? You said this uh, pecan. Sure. All right, so let's talk about some of these beers. So the first one we're pouring up here is... This is the, the chocolate-covered pecan porter. It's brewed with pecans from South Georgia Pecan. Yes. And uh, I'll let you have that. Thank you. Cane syrup. Excuse me. And uh, honey. Uh, I think uh, uh, we're now using uh, Nature Nates. Honey. Yeah, Nature Nates. They, ju that's a, they just moved down. <laughs> and and uh, uh, chocolate? Uh, uh, Georgia or, uh, Chocolate malt. Oh, okay. We haven't started putting chocolate nibs in it yet, uh, but we can. <laughs> you know. I, I, don't, I was just asking you. I don't care. Chocolate uh, malt basically gets the same thing done. It, pretty much. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, uh, the, this batch is probably different from the uh, batch that you guys had. Uh, kind of throw a little pecan meal in there. Mm. Um, I think I remember him talking about the upcoming changes and stuff. Yeah, yeah. to it, continue to tweak it. Uh, it's actually more difficult to brew because you could uh, there's a higher chance of getting a stuck mash mm. with a pecan meal, uh, but it, it, there's a just a tad different flavor profile. You get just a little bit, little bit more pecan. Yeah, with that. For sure. It's um, it's a nice. Uh, it's it right in the ballpark of having that kind of nutty brown taste, but it's definitely a stout. It's got the roast and the chocolate and stuff like that. Delicious. It definitely smells like chocolate. Pecan. And so, you use the pecan, the pecans from right down the street, yep. South Georgia Pecan Company. So it's all kind of local stuff. Where's the cane syrup from? Uh, Raisin Cane off of yeah. Forty One. Yeah. So uh, they do all their own cane syrup there, and uh, you know, ho hopefully they'll be able to supply us with cane syrup whenever we get in full production. You know, we'll obviously need a lot more. Yeah. Um, but hopefully we can work something out with them. You know, they're that's, kind of a small operation. Yeah, but, no, it's, you know, that's, we we would prefer to do business with with them than. You know, that's awesome that you're else. incorporating three different local companies yeah. into one to one beer, just yeah. one beer. So that's awesome. Maybe this year I'll um, collect pecans from my yard mm -hmm. and exchange them for money at 
George Pecan, and then my pecans will be in your beer. Exactly. I don't think they'd let your pecan. They they they'd probably like have a special special little bucket for your pecans because they're all wrong with my pecans. They're all the, you know they're a little weird shaped. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I just moved in here like two years ago. It's not like I have you been feeding your tree pecan food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I bought it at the same store where I bought my blinker fluid. <laughs> <laughs> your your uh, two by four stretcher. So tell us about um, review. Uh, probably probably not much has changed from last year, but for, for any new listeners or anything, like what's the plans for the uh, you know model of the brewery and what are your distribution plans? Core beers, tap room. You know what what what's gonna happen? Um, we'll definitely have a tap room. You know, given that the law has changed, it's, it's definitely a must now. You're gonna uh, be here going for a beer garden type things outside still too. We're gonna try a beer garden, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> I wish it was bigger, but it's it's just where it's at. It's not gonna be all that large. Um, if if you've ever been to Proof Brewing, yeah. they have an immaculate uh, beer garden. I really like yeah. like their place. Um, I used to work there. Really? Yeah, in their old location on Tennessee they, Street. They have uh, turf. It's not like grass. AstroTurf. It's AstroTurf. Mm-hmm. For, um, it's, it's, I thought that was interesting. Ball or, uh, yeah. Hey, bean bag. Ball. It's, uh, it, it was interesting. Uh, there's definitely ups, ups and, or pros and cons to having turf, but I kind of liked it. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, we'll, we'll definitely have a beer garden. Uh, it will be pet friendly outside. Um, not pet friendly inside. Uh, pet friendly, they're just not allowed in. Right, exactly. We still like them. No. Pine cone, so potato, throw pine, leashes pine, on pine, swimming pine. in the fermenters. <laughs> pine cone and potato are definitely welcome. <laughs> if I ever open a brewery, there will definitely be a brewery cat. Yeah, maybe not in the tap. Room. I was about to say. I said we you, we kind of played around with the idea of, of having a brew dog, but uh, you know I just uh, I don't know if I want to deal with it. I don't know if I want to deal with the the shedding. If I had a, if there was a dog that didn't shed, sure, hairless. Well, yeah, to do that. And GBC Chihuahua. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can feed it the leftover. I mean, I love no, I love dogs, but I think like I'm okay to like take a beer to somewhere where dogs are, right? Or go outside and let, you know hang out with my dog outside. Right. I like dogs a lot, but to be honest with you, I hate when I go into a tap room and there's a bunch of dogs. Yeah, yeah, they can hang out outside, in my opinion. I think it's really I think, hot I, out there. I think it's oh. better suited outside. Really, I mean, you still you still when we were in Colorado, home. that's like. Everywhere you went was just dog yeah. tap rooms, and but people, you know, I brought my kids to some, so people are probably water. the same thing. Like, I love kids, but I don't want them in my tap room. <laughs> well, well, I don't we'll disagree def- with that either. We'll, 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 <laughs> we'll definitely be be uh, family friendly too. Uh, we'll probably will uh, allow kids in the tap room. We're not going to restrict them to. You know, say, is that even allowed in South Georgia? <laughs> I, I no, not a restaurant. I don't. I don't even know. I think like. To a certain hour, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the rule is. On we're that. we're gonna make it as pre- pet friendly and family friendly as possible. That's nice. good. That's good. Good to hear. Yep. The, the, those are our intentions. I uh, will get harnesses for potato and pine cone, and we will walk <laughs> over. I'll get harnesses for my <laughs> kids. We'll stay on. We the can pit. attach the two of them. <laughs> <laughs> if I bring potato and pine cone, your kids will be occupied. This is true. Point Absolutely true. Yeah. Absolutely true. And uh, so you guys want any more of this? you're opening. Uh, you can have the rest of it. You're opening like I got more. Pretty big or whatever, right? So, uh, I assume you're going to also distribute. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So oh, you're yeah. going to start local, eventually spread to regional, or how's that going to work? Uh, yes. You know, the the ideal situation is that you uh, saturate your backyard first. So we'll definitely uh, uh, do distribution. We'll start uh, as close as possible, and uh, we'll start moving out. Uh, you know, we we had projected times. On how far we would move out, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, given the current uh, or given that the law has changed, you know, even though it it doesn't have anything to do with distribution, you know, uh, taproom sales actually drives distribution sales. So uh, I kind of up for anything. I, uh, you know, I'm I'm totally okay with hey, we're making enough beer, we can distribute it this far. Okay, let's do it. So so we may be able to be more widespread sooner <clears throat> than we initially thought. I mean, you know the local restaurants are going to be clamoring for it. They already are. I mean, I think, yeah. So, um, what about, we, we kind of touched on this, but what, 
What do you see as impacts on the community as far as like jobs? We already talked about how you're going to be using local ingredients. So that's local businesses who you're going to be partnering with. Uh, What do you see as far as GBC's impact on Valdosta and the surrounding area? Well, we're, we'll, starting out, you know, that we'll have four to five jobs available, um, you know, depending on, on how fast everything occurs, you know, we may be hiring people a lot quicker, yeah. a lot more. So that, that's kind of up in there, but, but the, the ballpark figure now is, is starting out four or five, you know, we'll have some, some brewers and sisters have and stuff. have enough bartenders. Yeah, beer tenders. I, it drives me crazy yeah. when a tap room is busy and there's one guy working. Right. I can't stand it. I recently was at a brewery in the Atlanta area that I won't name. Uh-oh. I was texting Ryan the whole time. Is this this was still on tour. This was still on tour time. Yeah. Me and Danny's coming out. I had to. So it was like a Saturday afternoon. It was busy. It was a Saturday afternoon. Saturday afternoon, yeah. And their cash register to pay for the tour is right by the front door so you wait in line outside in the summer right. and then you get tokens or whatever ticket to, to get your beer after your tour and the line there was only one maybe two eventually people serving beer and so you waited outside to pay for your tour and then the beer the line to get beer was so long it wrapped totally around the entire inside of the tap room and back out the front door so you went inside pay for your tour and then got back in line Literally, all I did at the brewery was get a beer and then walk back to the back of the line. (laughs) That's all I did the whole time. How many bartenders were there? One or two serving beer. And then there was a separate person who was in charge of selling, like, to-go package and growlers and stuff. Hmm. And who knows? Someone might call them sick. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But... Like Saturday night, the point is Saturday, four Saturday, beer tenders. Saturday, yeah. Friday <laughs> night. You need to, you need to have definitely. A, a that was an unrelated to GBC tangent. I yeah. will say I went to every brewery in Savannah this weekend, and I went to Service Brewing Company. Mm-hmm. One of the we were Jay Rice and I were talking about this before Ryan got here. One of the nicest, most pristine bars, let alone brewery, I've ever been in. And I walked in right at open, and. I was the only person there. It was like Friday night, maybe. I walked in right at open, and there was like eight bartenders. And I was like, "This is kind of awkward." Hey, everyone. <laughs> they probably, but they probably know they're going to. But by the time it. I yeah. left, oh, yeah. by the time I left, slammed. Yeah, yeah. So service is a very, very, very nice brewery, and uh, you know those they guys are great. Really, they're, they're cool. Service. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it! All right, let's crack another beer. All right. Oh, we have uh, beer on this podcast. So I have... Um, let's do we, watermelon. We, watermelon. Oh, let's, I'll see which one is which. That's watermelon. J-Raz sure. was a little unsure off camera. Yeah, I uh, kind of uh, uh, capped him quick, quickly before the, before the, before the podcast. So. This one smells like a uh, Flanders Red. What? Smells like a Flanders Red. I'm just kidding. <laughs> also, if this were the Doug Stanhope podcast, I'd be yelling at you for talking off mic. It's not like we've never left the uh, screen. We're working on a screen. Working definitely, on this is definitely, the, uh, definitely the watermelon. So, uh, to, to relate to this beer, it is um, similar to 21st Amendment's Yellow High Watermelon. Um, I feel, uh, which is a good beer. I like, mm-hmm. I like their beer. Uh, they have good Very stuff. Very popular beer. Yes. Um, I, I, you know, uh, we just want to do a watermelon and maybe have a little bit more watermelon oomph to it. And I feel we accomplished that with this beer. Yeah. Did you get them from the famous Watermelon City or whatever? Mm. Oh, just local. Uh, actually, I think I stopped uh, on the side of the road. Nice. Yep. That's awesome. Very watermelon as, as local as I, could, as I could do. Really good. But yeah, man. One thing I don't like a lot about a lot about a about a lot of fruited wheat beers, including the Twenty First Amendment one, is the wheat or hefe yeasts that they use throw a particular phenol that really smells and tastes like rubber bands or pink erasers to me. Yeah. And this one does not. No, so. it's, <laughs> I'm it's, glad. It's uh, and you know, we we, we, we me and Chris kind of went back and forth about doing a wheat, um, you know, a, a fruity wheat like this, and uh, South Georgia. Yeah, and, and we definitely wanted to do a fruit beer, but whether or not to put it in wheat. 
And uh, ultimately, we decided, you know what, let, let's try and do this and, and, and see if we can, how comparable it is. Well, and, and uh, you know, the thing is, like, there's so many breweries that do, like, your your Heffies and your whatever, <clears throat> Blue Moonish, orangey. We've talked beers. about this a million times. And it's, I mean, in South Georgia, yeah, okay. In, in the South Georgia market, you got to have, like, a pale ale and blonde, whatever. Right. But I, I'm... I hate it when I walk into a new brewery and all they have on tap is stout porter, brown ale, pale ale, porter. Yeah. I'm like, give me a break. They're going to be bad. Usually if they're just the, the standards, it's like they're not putting Not any, to throw shade they're on not any putting of any uh, thought. Our, our past no, 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 guests no. that are about to open because that very may well be the first four beers you have Well, I mean, tap. it's okay to uh, have I know you're going to explore. But the point is, if I haven't put any more thought into just having the four basic, i got to have it. There's got to be something that hooks people. Yeah. But the thing is, anybody can drink this sort of beer. Exactly. You know, and and we all we are a watermelon region. You might as well own it. Love but yeah, it. it's not. What what's the ABV on it? Uh, this is around five five point two five. That's pretty. That's pretty hefty for. Her. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I, mean, it's I, not, I, like, I I usually aim a little high. That's all right. We're going with the ABV. Uh, I try and aim. aim hey, you got to punch above your belt. You know, go. Yep. Of your class, <laughs> built, whatever. But uh, th- this beer, you know, I, uh, <laughs> you know, it's really hard for you when you brew your own stuff uh, to not be self-critical. You know, you're all, you're always going to be your biggest uh, criticizer. It's but, funny that is exactly what um, I'm blanking. Chris, last month, mm-hmm. it's exactly what Chris said. He's like, you almost, and, and I said it's the same way in classical music. It, it, almost uh you have to not let it ruin it for you because yeah. it becomes your job to right. be critical but uh this beer i really enjoy i think so, so i think it's good stuff was yeah. this something that you potentially would like can distribute it will more than likely be a seasonal okay i guess we, you have to with fresh we, watermelons we, well we will, I, that's the other thing about some of these popular watermelon beers that are available year round yeah that's you know true that means it's either ain't real or they're not using anything right. local or right. old. So, so or it's, it's <laughs> six months old on the shelf. So, so, so that so would never happen here <laughs> in Valdosta. But so, they buy all the craft beer. So, uh, so yeah, it really all depends on how well it sells. Uh, obviously, we'll have you know, with every brewery, you know, you'll have special stuff at the brewery. Yeah. Uh, this I, one, you better yeah. tell me when every single one is tapped. Oh yeah, this uh, you know, th- th- this one is kind of. Kind of straddles the fence, you know. If it is a big enough hit, we'll try and do it year round. If not, it'll be seasonal. I and, think uh, uh, we we didn't say that earlier. Uh, I'm sure we asked this last time, but just just to reiterate again, uh, packaging plans ever in the future. Packaging plans, like our, our oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna definitely, can, yeah, de- definitely like right away or just in the future. Oh, uh, we're definitely gonna can. Like we're we're gonna start out canning. We 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 do we will not have our own canning line because those are really really expensive. Uh, we we'll, we'll use what's called a mobile canning solution, yeah. and they basically have everything on a trailer, and they back up right to your bright tank, and they can it right there. That's awesome. And uh, yeah, I think that's like the coolest thing ever. Yeah. And so we'll uh, we'll eventually st- hopefully we'll, get your own though. Yeah, eventually, eventually. But uh, yeah, I we'll, think a we'll, lot of breweries we'll start, start with that mobile canning though. It's a great way mm-hmm. to like it's a green room day, yeah. Yeah. Wild heaven. Yeah, it's uh, but yeah, we're gonna start canning right out of the door. What are the do what's, another Kickstarter and then you can buy your own? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that'd be a lot. Yeah, a lot. I'll take another hat. For it it's a lot of kit. That'd be that's a lot, a lot of kicking. Yeah. What's well, the, you can get a used one. Like uh, I remember when Cigar City got their first canning line, it was like, uh, or when they upgraded their canning line, it was like one that New Belgium grew out of. Yeah. Oh, I thought that's it was like a Green Giant. Really cheaper. <laughs> no, although. <laughs> I have been to Sprecher, Sprecher Brewing uh-huh. in um, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, and they famously, they don't anymore, I think they've changed, but they used to famously sell like 16 ounce bottles uh, in four packs. And um, someone, when I was on the tour, asked, or maybe it's just a thing they say in the tour, it's because they bought their bottling line from like Tropicana. Really? <laughs> and the only thing it could fill was 16 ounce bottles. Oh, nice. So like wow. we just couldn't refuse how cheap this thing was. Yeah. Hey, you got to make your name. And so we just did 16 ounce. Cool. I know I'm going back to the watermelon beer, but I think that's a beer that average Joe six pack Valdostian would just crush. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think like, 
I think about my non craft beer people I know, and I think that would be the beer that would be like. I think so too. They would. They would. They would. I'm really on it. Because yeah. yeah. people do love that 21st Amendment beer. Right. All right, let's keep cracking. And you could make a right. uh, stronger version and sell it to the hobos. Hashtag watermelon malt liquor. Yeah. Malt liquor. <laughs> you, if if I'm ever involved in any batch of beer at it's Georgia be Beer Company, liquor. it's gonna be a malt liquor. Yeah. <laughs> That's why it's gonna be Danny and, and like four hobos. One of the malt liquor Danny and four hobos are gonna be there for the malt liquor release. <laughs> <laughs> what will GBC put in their first 40? <laughs> we had a 40 uh, like after our first or second episode. Yeah, that was. I that don't remember that real best well. Best damn. Model. I don't remember, I don't remember that. that very well. I think Sour Carl and a couple of their local friends came over. Yeah. Sour Ooh. Carl. Sour, Sour Carl. Carl. All right, let's crack another one. I got to keep this, uh, All right. this thing going. Uh, I'm not sure which let's one the, these uh, are. Peach. This is the different lid. So which one's the peach? Maybe oh. this one. Okay. Oh, wrong side. Wait, that's got a gold cap. Wait, did you say there's four beers? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. There's a peach and there's a colch. Yes. It won't be fun. So, fair warning. This is not a peach beer. It says this is a shandy. Got uh, some juice in it. It has. I can just pe- pour it down the drain. It has. <laughs> tr- trust me, you don't want to do that. I thought, we, I thought we, this was a beer podcast. It is. Uh, so it is made with. I don't drink beer. Uh, peach lemonade. I love shandies. Love them. And it's peachy. <laughs> That's the one. Is it? It's. It, I don't. I don't particularly like peach, but that's not your fault. It's um. But it's good. That's a good shandy. Yeah. I, th- I think we're gonna t- tone down on the peach a little bit, but uh. I say run it, run it. it yeah, it, it, I would, it's not I bad. It, it's uh. You're not asking my opinion about that, but like, I think I think <laughs> we're perfect for uns- it up. Yeah, unsolicited it. advice. Sure. sure. <laughs> I want pits floating in mine. <laughs> That's actually a good indicator of uh, a, a good beer. If there's, I think uh, you should have to peel off some fuzzy skin to get to the beer. <laughs> That's a peach <laughs> like a yogurt. <laughs> no, this is this is. I mean, we're we're almost out of shandy season though. It was still right. pretty hot in September, but like over summer, I've had I've noticed that like. And it was a it was kind of a recent trend, but these craft shandies. There's a bunch of bad shandies out there. Mm-hmm. Or, I mean, there's good German shandies, which I think where where they come from. But then all of a sudden, called Rattlers over there. Yeah, and then all of a sudden they like, you know how like these fake companies say, oh, we're gonna make a you know alcoholic root beer, or and then and all of a sudden there are these kind of oh, not great no, uh... Rattlers and shandies. They were really kind of artificial tasting, and yeah. they did, just not a lot of care into them. Basically, any of those elusive traveler and the the right the, the line the of JW ones, the they're all super r- sweet. The yeah. TW pitcher, yeah, but they're just too sweet and kind of fake tasting. This one's not. That this sweet. is not like that at all. Yeah, this is. It still has that beer element. It's very good. One of my uh, one of my favorite beers is actually um, Sam Adams Porch Rocker, which is oh, te- yeah. which is technically a shandy. And uh, no, I mean, it's, not it's it's super sweet or anything. Exactly, I either. exactly, yeah. and it's and it's really really good. Yeah. And what is there a particular style of beer that this was? Uh, it's actually called uh, Rudy, short for rudimentary. Okay. So it's it it's it's as plain as I can make a beer. Just a normal. And I I, I make it to base it, it's essentially a blonde ale. Yeah. Uh, and I make it and I add stuff to it. In, in this, just, just for this purpose. Kind yep, of. and in this case, I, I did uh, the uh, Pete Shandy, which is also called Pretty Woman, named for Julie Roberts. Walking down the street. She's right. from Georgia. Oh, she is. She's yeah, that in your it's, cast it's somewhere in Atlanta, Atlanta right? Smarty, is that? We can we can add it in. <laughs> I think I had Richard Gere. Isn't he the guy? Richard Gear, quit hitting your phone on the He table. was in Pretty Woman. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, we have names for these beers. So I, 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 what was the what I, I was the uh, the uh, watermelon one called? Watermelon crawl. Hopefully we. Are you allowed to say these? Uh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> if if at some point in the podcast you just hear beep, <laughs> Jay Rice called us, be like, dude, you gotta edit that out. Yeah, you know, I listen to a lot of podcasts. That happens actually a lot. Yeah. Like, oh, sure. They'll say a name or something that they realize they shouldn't have said, and they, they it, poop it out. It's a uh, it, it's it's too perfect. Of a, of a situation to not call it that if we have to go through legal avenues to it's about pretty woman or watermelon crawl watermelon both watermelon crawl mainly though 
you know, it's, What's a, the it's, story it's, there? it's a Tracy Bird song, uh, old 90s country. Uh, and in the song, he talks about going through uh, Georgia in late July. And so, oh, and, if, uh, and, and he goes to town with his, Could you just you know, misspell one of the words? Well, if any, uh, if Burnt Hickory and Piedmont have taught me anything, it's that you can name a beer whatever the hell you want and no one's going to say anything because they both, all of their beers are named after some That's of true. Bands. Piedmont is totally, every, every beer they have is named Burnt after Burnt Hickory is, they're named every after bands. beer is a song. Yeah, I think you'd be all right. I don't, I, I, a lot of times, if it's in different realms like that, I think as it's As long as you don't name it after like a... Metallica or Taylor Swift, if you're fine. I'm not a lawyer, but I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. <laughs> you're good. <laughs> the, uh, well, what? <laughs> well, one of the things that, that's concerning is that uh, that breweries all over will actually use the same beer name sometimes. Oh, yeah. Don't. Oh, yeah. So, but, Google it. But, what do we say on this podcast? Just, just Google, Google it. it. Breweries, I, you I, drive I, me crazy. I, just Google it. I think what happens is that if they are not... Uh, if their distribution never overlaps, I don't think they they group. worry about it. I think if you get to like Wolf got a letter from or Lina um, Kugels tried to sue Sweetwater for four four twenty really? a few years back. Oh yeah, for what? what well, yeah, what does Lina Kugels have? Be, uh, they they claim that they had the name first. And, what uh, Sweetwater? Yeah, no, uh, or four twenty. Four twenty. Lina Kugels did. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't even. Know. I, I think, think four twenty been floating around since the sixties. I think. I think. <laughs> I think uh, I think it was Lana Kugels. I could be wrong. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna wreck your world because there's no way there's not already beers named Pretty Woman. But Pretty Woman does not necessarily like Pretty Woman the movie. Our I mean, we've got a be. letter from Three Floyds. I don't know if I should say that on the podcast, but well, we're just gonna have to edit out this whole section. <laughs> it wasn't even crazy. They had a beer called Stormageddon, Dark Lord of Hops, and Three Floyds said, "Nope, we have a beer called Dark Lord. You have to stop." And so now they just call it Stormageddon. Hmm. It wasn't even the real like name. Should have called it like Dorklard. Yeah. Nothing on Rate Beer <laughs> comes up named Pretty Woman. All right, here first. GBC has Pretty Woman. This is legal proof. Legal legal I said it at Holiday Inn Express last night. <laughs> it is uh, Sunday, September seventeenth, twenty seventeen. What else do we need to claim? Walking down the street. Watermelon crawl. I just sent a letter to myself crawl. to prove it was our idea. It was not on my idea. It was no, Jay like, Wright's idea. So I know I still know a lot of the people at Proof. And, um, again, I don't know if this is a thing I should say on air. Yeah, they aren't going to listen. Some of their beers, they, like, kind of as a joke because they're so annoyed at how every beer name is taken. When they can't think of a name that's applicable or something, the brewers literally open an app on their phone that's a random word generator. And that's why some of their beers are literally just like Purple Porch Hippopotamus because they know that nobody has that beer name. When was the last time you went down there? Uh, just a couple Thursdays ago, I, uh, I went down and picked up all those cat- Catador beers. Gotcha. We we went not too long ago, and but before that, the last time I had been, Ooh, there are three watermelon crawls. Hey man, something we we'll have to have to deal with, you know. But for our for our purposes today, I interrupted. What were you saying about proof? <clears throat> uh. They're just making big moves, man. I like Dude, all. I, so I like, good. I like the stuff down there, man. It, we went through there, and the guy, uh, the head brewer, took us on tour. And uh, Larry or Aaron, can't remember his name. Guy with the glasses. Yep, younger guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm blanking on. And his name uh, too. they, uh, man, they just they got a lot going on. Yeah, it's really cool. They They've done really, good. Really cool uh, so there's a lot of breweries in Tallahassee now. You know, like, uh, they pop up. Yeah, Paste, uh, Paste Magazine does those um, rankings of beer styles. Not rankings of beer styles, but they pick a beer style and they get like 200 right, beers trees, yeah. and they rate them all. Right. And uh, they've done IPAs and they've done stouts and they've done porters and blah. And, and there's always a couple of really notable Georgia entries. But they did um, sours or they did maybe like Berliners and Gozas or something like that. And rate beers, raspberry, Goza, I think. Either Goza or Berliner Vice got second. Proofs? Proofs. <laughs> Yeah. Like their raspberry kissing giants got second, and it was on tap when I went. I was like, I can't. the owner was right. there, my boss from back when, and I was like, I got to try the famous raspberry kissing giants. He's like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it helps. Yeah, I think it helps when when like a magazine <clears throat> says you got the best beer or whatever. And talking about talking about canned fruit beers, their mango wit is crazy popular. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I like those guys, they mean. I was there before. I was there when it was just a liquor store and a bar. Mm-hmm. 
And then right when they opened the brewery is when I moved to Jacksonville. <laughs> of course. All right, I got another question for you. All right. You know, we've had a lot of breweries on the show, or potential breweries, I should say, who are far behind where you are. What, like, advice would you give to, like, people either in the process of starting a brewery or who want to open a brewery? Like, what's something you could go back in time you wish you could tell yourself? Ooh. That's a good question. Um, it's a little so probably some of the of our past guests listen. Uh, it's, it's a little, That's kind of what I was thinking. A little pessimistic, but expect delays and mm-hmm. stuff. Um, sometimes there's just things that that aren't in your control that that happen. But uh, I don't know. Going back and telling myself something is is a little different than than advice. That's that I true. Would be it is kind of two different questions, I um, suppose. Well, then think lean more towards advice towards future potential future burgers. Um, let's crack the colch in the meantime. Yeah, Jay Rice, don't drink that one beer. Don't drink that last <laughs> one. Uh, what would be something good that I can say? Uh, give me more than one. I, I explore all avenues um, of anything. Um, don't if you have an idea or you're settling on an idea, you know, don't don't settle on it. You know, make, make sure that. If, if you're doing something that it's it's either what you want to do or it's uh, your only avenue of choice gotcha um, you know th- th- there are things there are things that we start started out you know th- thinking a certain way you know and later on we were like well you, you know we really don't have to do this this way and then we're like you're right we don't so you know I, I would always say keep an open up keep an open mind I, I think that is good advice. Because I think, yeah. I think like brewer, people who want to start breweries and brewers, they do kind of get, we're going to do it just like this, 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 which is great if that happens. But as you can attest, and I think everybody who's ever opened a business, there's going to be things that pop up. Yeah. And if you can be flexible and open, you got to be able seems, to. You got to be yeah. able to adapt. For I think sure. that is that's very good advice, and I, I really, you know, I think you guys are are you know round and third. Um, and I've got a lot of, a lot of brewers who are maybe in the batter's box or right. just hitting it off. So I think like, you know, I wish I was there when they hit first base. Yeah. <laughs> so, so this beer is, uh, we cracked the coals for those listening. Not yes. Watching. And I forgot we had Stangas. Mm. We're supposed to oh. drink, drink the Kolsch in a Stanga. Stanga. I forgot. I have some uh, too. So yeah, uh, technically, you know, we and, 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 yeah, go nuts. Uh, this is how I spill on myself usually. Uh, so technically, if you are not brewing within the limits of Cologne, Get Germany, cool then it is so technically sweet. not a cold style. Cold style. So this is a cold style. Um, the it's, it's a particular beer cultures are, are are difficult to brew uh, in my in my opinion they are they uh the longer it sits the 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 better this beer does it's it's one of those that it after it sits for a while it's uh clears up beautifully it's nice and crisp like a lager it um uh you know that, that uh initially there's a little bit of diacetyl over time that diacetyl goes away and it ends up being a really really good beer over time that's another crushable entry. Yeah. So I get just, I still get just a little diacetyl. Awkward silence. I think we're all tasting. Now why Dude, why this why box. this cup? I don't know. What's up with the this glass? So that's how they serve it's it, it. In, in, in Cologne, Germany. They they have these huge racks that they can fit like twenty five stones. Wait, called, I thought that was Oktoberfest. Stongas. <laughs> Huge racks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got missed the Durndal reference. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the, 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 they're called Stongas. And uh, they, they, these, thing, they, these racks that they have hold like 25 of these. And uh, they basically, you, you go to a, 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 a pub in Cologne, Germany, and sit down. And they just bring them to you. They just keep coming, keep coming. Really? And, and what they do is they, they give you a coaster and they, and they mark a notch on your coaster for how many that you have. Whenever you're done, you just take the coaster up, take the coaster up and pay for whatever you drink. But uh, 
It's cool. That's on my bucket list. Something I want to do yeah. is go to Cologne, Germany and, and, and just do that for an entire day. That sounds fun. Yeah. That and a um, fresh Hefeweizen. No. I hear it's otherworldly <laughs> if you are like at Vian Stefaner. Yeah. Oh, really? Like just mind blowing. Huh. Like mm. one of the simplest, in, in American craft beer nerd terms, one of the simplest kind of styles of beer is something like a Kolsch and a Hefeweizen. You go to Germany and have it fresh, and it's just like you're transported to a different world. <laughs> well, I straight pounded that. That was delicious. Yeah. It's like my, my, my beer bucket list actually is to visit Belgium, but it's so close. Right. You can't not also go to Germany. Exactly. <laughs> go get a Hefeweizen. Go get a Kolsch. Go get like a Munich lager. Uh-huh. Just, but also, Germany is where all of the be- several of the best brands of tubas are made. And so oh, I go yeah. visit some of those places too. Could you buy a tuba? No, no, it'd be way too difficult to get back to America because I have some already and they're very expensive. You just buy an extra plane ticket for it. That's what you have to do. Dress dress it up like a in woman. In some cases, in that <laughs> case, flying internationally, it would probably be cheaper to check it. But if you're flying from a major airport to another airport, like if you're flying Jacksonville to Chicago. And is it cheaper to just you can get like JetBlue or Southwest? Uh-huh. You just buy an extra ticket. Really? You just sit next to your tuba. You have to call though because you can't type in like your tuba's passport information online. <laughs> right. <laughs> when it gets awkward is when the tuba wants the aisle seat. Yeah. You have to argue with. I'll them. take. I'll take <laughs> this beer also. <laughs> <laughs> can I have just pretzels? <laughs> what were we talking about? I, I don't derailed. Know. Okay. Oh, you asked about oh, the glass. Yep. Yeah. All right. I got. Two more questions for you. Okay. Before we go into the Cask of Another, where you get a lot of questions. What is the first beer you are going to drink when you are an open legal brewery? What's the what's the what is the beer you're looking forward to tasting first? Our IPA or possibly double IPA. The double IPA. Big IPA fan. Yes. Nice. Very good. For and anyone I'm, that's listening and not watching, I just tried to take a big drink of Kolsch and like poured it all over myself. Corner roll is going I on. I believe not. Oh, there. Hey! hey! For the first time this month, Potato the Podcast Cat has taken over the camera. So somebody was talking about Kolsch. She's looking right at the camera, too. I'm going to have to cap that and post it on Facebook. Uh, hi, um, Potato. And the last question of the interview portion before we go on to uh, Oktoberfest, Rocktoberfest. Awesome. Beer review is what can Anna Broom fans do to support GBC? What can we do to help you out till you get uh, across the finish line? There, we are. You know, we still sell merchandise. Uh, you know, you can definitely go on there, and and we still have hats and or excuse me, uh, uh, we're almost out of hats actually. All right. We still have shirts and koozies and stickers. Uh, we very recently, <laughs> we very recently. Um, Ordered glasses. Nice. So those will we, we're taking. What them. prescription? <laughs> Zing! I'm full of them. Today. <laughs> That's a singer. Uh, so we uh, we're taking those to uh, the uh, Hurricane Hoedown in Cordial. Cool. Um, uh, people at that event will actually be able to purchase um, a glass. If you have any left over, can uh, yes. average Joe get one? Oh, yeah. So yeah. So we, we, we plan on having some left over, and they will be for sale. And we were looking website. at the glasses before the show. They're really cool. They're they're kind of modified IPA glasses. Kind of. They're not, they're not they're not exactly tulip glasses, but they're kind of they're somewhere between a tulip glass and a uh, pint glass. Sort Standard of. pint glass. Yeah. 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 Pretty cool. So very good. Anything else, or do we just? Uh, be chomping at like I said you guys tend to have events and we'll put uh, anybody who's listening to anti brew will always uh, re uh, tweet that and repost that but anything else we can do to help out uh, uh, that, that's pretty much it you know whenever you see us uh, whenever you see us on social media uh, like and share stuff on Facebook <laughs> gotta do that gotta do that <laughs> oh, need some help yeah uh, yeah right. I just want to those beers and some gas station pizza. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but yeah, we'll uh, we'll we'll push all the social media stuff at the end. But yeah. definitely be uh, be ready to do some of that. And we got. All right, let's get to it. I like the uh, the sticker 
Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Looking good. All right. All right. So moving on to what did you call it this month? Brian always comes up with funny. 5.6 minute October Rocktober beer review. Oktoberfest Rocktoberfest. Oh yeah. Beer October. review. So we have very graciously from Five Points My Wine. Five six Points. Oktoberfest beers including two German beers. I mean German beers. Deutschland nice. beer. And uh, uh, what's, what's, uh, what's Oktoberfest for our uh, so, people who don't know? Uh, first of all, a lot of people don't realize Oktoberfest does actually start in September. Yep. And it's a big festival celebrated a uh, wedding of a princess or something like something that. Something like that. There's horse uh, races. For, for a lot of more information, go back to our episode last year. Or just Google I it. I think it was also the GBC episode where we did yeah. Oktoberfest last time awesome. with Chris. Yep. So um, I think that's perfect. And next time I'll wear my yeah, actual leader hose. And- yes. Yeah, for sure. So I Google it, as we always jokingly say, just Google it to learn more about Oktoberfest. But at one, your one trivia tidbit is that it does actually start in September. It, and uh, It's basically, to me, it's the time when you can start drinking malty beers again. That's, I mean, you can drink... If you're Danny, you're going to drink Den Fitty, naked on the, on the beach. beach. Naked. You know that. Well, this story gets better and better every month. <laughs> but uh, mermaids and yeah. sirens. <laughs> but for me... No, that's a manatee. <laughs> I've been at sea for a long time. Oh, I guess we're starting with Danny. Oh, Danny. Uh, and, yeah, it's basically time to start drinking the malty goodness again that we love. And, and start... It's a... Uh, they're... they're um, it would they're be... It would loggers... Be. Yeah. Right. Yes. But there, so there's two different kinds. There's the traditional Martins and the Fest beers. Again, all of this is in our episode last month, mm-hmm. and it's probably on several, several of those horrible, boring beer podcasts I hate, where all they do is just sit there and review beers for two hours. Our so, review only takes six minutes. Exactly. That's exactly why I do it, because I used to listen to beer podcasts, and I don't anymore, because they're all boring. Like, today we're going to taste 12 pale ales. Well, that's nice. Next. We promise we will never taste 12 pale ales. With the exception of our... Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know. Tom and Nancy, <laughs> can we do a 12-minute review? <laughs> that's true. <laughs> With the exception of our buddies at um, Beer Guys Radio, fellow Georgians. Yeah, those guys are Atlanta. funny. They actually have cool guests and shit. They don't just we sit got around. Cool, and... We got cool guests, too. No, I'm not. I'm saying they do. And <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm saying they're like us. Uh, oh, okay. They have cool guests, and they do interesting stuff. Their podcast stuff. that started way before ours is so exactly You guys may not have looked, but there are probably thousands of beer podcasts on iTunes now. And 99% of them are lame. Month. We're reviewing Oktoberfest beers. Oktoberfest is in September, and it celebrates the blah, 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 blah. Let's, let's drink some I beers. I don't brush my yeah. teeth. Let's drink some beers before we alienate the 99 So all of, these are, uh, <laughs> all of these are available at Five Points. Absolutely. Five Wine Spirits. Go pick some up. And like I said, it's a mix of Mart- traditional Martins that have been cold lagered for months and months versus the fest beers to be enjoyed at the festival. Again, Google it. Listen to our episode last year. We're just going to do pop through these in no particular order. Right. And if you're reason. unfamiliar with how our reviews work, we uh, pour them up and we have one minute to talk about them. We cannot talk about them any longer than one minute. So, um, how are we going to start? Which way are we going here? Let's start with the Germans. All right. So, we have two German, actual German Oktoberfest beers. Yep. Einger and Hofbrau. Hofbrau, right? All right, okay, that's really going with fest beer. It looks. And funny. I'm going to. Uh, what are we gonna start with? Start with the Hofbrau. Where's my Stein? And your what? Where's my Stein? I only got one. Well, I have two, but the other one's a liter mug. And you just ruined the. <laughs> you just ru- ruined the reveal, especially starting with Hofbrau. I have a Hofbrau mug. An Oktoberfest Stein. Point it the other way. Nice. There you go. Oh, there you go. There you go. The logo's on the front. Can't really see it from here. Anyway. So now we both ruined. Yeah, the and if you're listening on iTunes, check out this Stein. Just know that I'm trying it on in the stein. And we only have one minute, so don't pour yourself too much. Because <laughs> I didn't get out the little sample glasses this time. Because I wanted to do steins. Also, whenever we have guests and we do all these samples, then I have to put a thousand glasses in the dishwasher or I hand wash them. Very good. And all right, did you start the timer? Here we go. Here we go. Hofbrau, Oktoberfest beer. Get it at five points. It's one of the lighter ones. Yeah, I think this is a fest beer as opposed to a Martin. Yeah. Fest beers tend to be this lighter. Is you get ten mugs of from the ladies in the tent. Mm-hmm. Mm. 
Six point three percent alcohol. Yeah, they it's, it's up there. It's it's a little to uh, it's more little amber bottles, so it's not skunky these days. It isn't a skunky, huh? As I remember it, it's they it's tasty. I mean, it's, it's just, I mean, it's just kind of got that rich maltiness. I'd slam this with the brat all September long. Yep. Yep. Totally agree. I mean, there's not. It's not like you can sit there and talk about the complexity of it, really. Right. It is exactly what it is. You but know, yeah, it's it's got the spiciness that it's supposed to have. Um, it's just, it's just really delicious. I really like it. Yeah. I actually you know, bought some of this uh, the other day, and it's it's wonderful. And this one comes in the six pack. Is it the Ianger that comes in the four pack? But this one comes in the six. Done. Pack. Zip it. Dang it. And look at this handsome. Yeah, backup look at this handsome couple on the six pack. Actually, in Savannah, I saw while I'm, while I'm pouring the new beer. Um, just by coincidence, I was at Habersham. Habersham on Abercorn, which is the better Habersham, incidentally. Speak on, English. On Habersham. Habersham is like the name of a street. And uh, Hofbrau, they had Hofbrau. They might have these at Five Points. I don't know. I'll ask. Um, they had Hofbrau mixed 12 packs. And so it was like four Fest beers, four... Munich lagers or Hellas lagers and four Hefeweizens. Cool. Oh, that would be. And I was like, that would be cool. Because she was like, we're having an Oktoberfest party, and my husband made this list, and I'm supposed to get a lager, and I'm supposed to get an Oktoberfest, and I'm supposed to get a Hefeweizen. The guy was like, I have all of them. <laughs> Boom! And she bought like. It's four like that of those. moment you wait for when you're at a beer store. <laughs> Did they hear us talking at my house? <laughs> all right. Moving on to what do we got? What's this one? Einger Oktoberfest marks an authentic Bavarian festival lager. So that was from the actual um, Hofbrau München, so Munich. And this is uh, Einger, is from Eing, Germany, <laughs> hence Einger. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, brewed in accordance with the Reinheitsgebot. Reinheitsgebot. Which is the German purity law of what year, Danny? I don't remember. Fifteen, sixteen. That's right. Jay Rice knew it. Yeah, he's a brewer. No. <laughs> and what is? Oh, go ahead. Are we starting it? Go. All right. Prost. Prost. Aye, 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 what's aye, what's aye. the what's the Germany period of law? You can only have what in the beer? Uh, well, I think it was what water, was malt, water, hops, malt. and then they eventually realized they had to include yeast. Yeah. In that. Yeah, I think that's correct. Was it, was Unless it? you're Anheuser Busch. That's oh. been a huge. That's been a huge thing. Everybody's seen their new marketing has been like we craft beer with only the five purest ingredients: water, hops, barley, rice, and clutch the corn blood. or whatever. <laughs> and immediately, every craft beer nerd's like, "Oh, you don't use yeast in your beer?" Oh, um, oh. By the way, we have 15 seconds left, and we've said nothing about this beer. That's a good. It's it's good. It's a little darker than the fest beer. Good. Um, I, Ooh, I'm, yeah, it is darker. I'm, Maltier, I'm still, Maltier. I'm still the Hofbrauf Oktoberfest beer fan. I uh, think if I was gonna have like more than one, definitely Hofbrauf. It's not a competition, Jay Rice. They're all good. I uh, I like the design of this bottle. It's really what? Cool. What? That's it can't be twelve ounces. It's gotta be. A it looks smaller one. than that, doesn't it? It's eleven point two. What? Same as this. <gasps> all right, German beer nerd question. Season. Why do the Germans only use eleven point two? It's not a beer ounces? nerd question. It's a metric system question because they do things in milliliters i'm a beer nerd i've never heard of the metric system <laughs> <laughs> what's the next beer awkward sliding in what are I'm we doing feeling next? It for some reason yeah. i'm in a good mood it's yeah. been a long week it has been a long um, week october first beer we always put me in good yeah mood. and we've Love been it. i've been trapped in a house without power I drank a few warm beers. I'm not proud. I was so sad because I had power. <laughs> I'm not Ryan, proud of that. <laughs> Ryan texted me. I was like, "Are you guys surviving? Do you need to come down and visit or something?" And he's I had like, no "He goes, uh, I'm really tired of cold showers and warm beer." <laughs> <laughs> That's my new country song. No. <laughs> uh, but so you guys know, you know. Uh, we try and go to uh, Helen, Georgia every year. Yes. Uh, for uh, oh, a, yeah, yeah. A, a annual Oktoberfest trip and. That's this coming is, up. This is so much fun right now because it reminds me of being in Helen. That's right. Oh, so nice. So great. So oh, great. Oh, man. Um, I, I've never actually been to now. Helen. We talked about, we went up for the eclipse. Right. And we Our talked city. about going through Helen on the way. It was just, we couldn't do it. I probably wouldn't have had much time to enjoy myself. It's 
It's a blast. Yeah, it's a blast. I'd want, and I said what I told my wife is like, I'd rather go for Oktoberfest. Like you would too. Right. You know, let's let's go for Oktoberfest. They, they actually have something in uh, February called something. It's weird. They dress up like Halloween. Oh really? It's weird. It's weird. Weird thing. Is it Carnival or something? Yes. I yeah, think that's it. I once knew a German girl, and she talked about Carnival being like she. I don't think she was from Munich, so I think Carnival was a bigger deal than Oktoberfest gotcha. for her. Okay. But I remember her saying something about they dressed up, and they actually had something in Helen for that, and they had all fun. all different and Halloween they, in February. They did specific only craft beer during that time. Really? Nice. Yes. Yeah, I, I really wanted to do that, but I had uh, expended my in, uh, Helen GBC. GBC. Speaking of Our, Halloween, locals, uh, Tubaween, the oh, famous yeah. Tubaween is Sunday, October 29th at 3 p.m. on a Sunday in the afternoon, so you don't have to keep your kids up late on a Tuesday night or anything. My daughter come, come talks about my daughter talks about Tubaween, like starting. She's already started. The, I'm Ooh. not going to give it away, but the opening tune of Tubaween is because Ryan's daughter requested it. Yep. Well, what, is, what is Tuba Ween? What is Tuba Ween. So I'm a tuba professor and I conduct tuba a uh, gotcha. tuba okay. ensemble. Like tuba. And we do... Uh, <laughs> like and they all dress up like tubas. We do <laughs> Scare a, the children. Uh, we do a uh, Halloween themed <laughs> concert every October. Okay. Open to um, ghosts and ghouls of all ages. And everything is Halloween <laughs> or mo- oh, I have like a, I have a whole spiel. Yeah, I, I could tell. It's... Uh, it was so natural. Halloween themed, so it's all Halloween horror movie music, and uh, performers all are in costume, and we change costumes throughout. I change costume a lot, and we have videos. Um, we typically have dancers, singers. We have full choir this year for a couple pieces. That's awesome. That's and awesome. honestly, and it's for all ages. Kids my, my kids and, love it, and but the, the thing audience is-, is supposed to come in costume as well. So bring your kids. And it's, nice. it's, it's a good way for getting kids to listen to some classical music. And they're going to love it because they're going to know the songs. Oh, it's they're awesome. They're going to see the costumes. But my daughter is serious. I have, an actual, about I have all the costumes already. Our biggest Patreon subscriber, my mom, comes every year and dresses like a witch and hands out candy. And she can't come this year. And so she, guess who gets... She's crushed. So guess who gets to hand, dress like a witch and hand out candy? Ryan's gonna hand out candy. <laughs> I didn't say I'd dress like a witch, but I would for no, I, I would for Danny's mom. I still if she requested. I told you it, we need to dress us, but we can't say it because yeah, I can't give away. I'll do can't that. Give away the first piece. Yep. Can't give away. All right, one minute. Go. This is totally not related to beer, so let's go. What What are we drinking, Danny? Heavy this seas. is Treasure, Treasure Fest, Fest Oktoberfest Lager. Heavy Seas out of Maryland. Is that correct? It's gonna be the darkest of the three. Yeah. So far, for it's sure. It's in color, so at least. Definitely a different take on the uh, aromas. Like, it's a little Whoa. bit more hoppy, less malty. Yeah, it's like caddy. Mm-hmm. It smells like litter, but in a good way. That makes they are from Baltimore, sense. Maryland. <laughs> I think <laughs> potato is passed out. It's because you've been spilling all that beer that's been drinking. Yeah, it's not as uh, it's darker, but it's not heavier. Definitely different, like malt it's, profile. It, it is. It's yeah. not. <clears throat> It's not nearly as like I don't know if you would have handed this to me, I would have guessed it's a right. fest beer or a Marzen. And they don't say it, they say it's Treasure Fest. Which it says Oktoberfest Lager. Well yeah, but it you know, Treasure that. Fest is a different thing in Baltimore where they all all the Baltimoreans Well, I can't finish my story. You can, because I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I they, thought you were joking. You know no, it's a real thing. Oh no, I had no idea. It's not a real thing. I'm oh, I was like, what? Are you <laughs> Treasure <laughs> <Fest> <laughs> Baltimore? Like, why do you know about yeah, that? Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> they all go out. We're all sitting so here on bated breath. It's basically like a pub crawl, but in every bar there's a, Knock little, there's a little chest full of beer. And the first person that finds the chest gets to drink all the beer. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even finish my beer in time. That's awesome. Uh, I think Jay Rice bringing four of his beers has helped to move along to yeah. the other stuff. We usually they don't have guests who have four, All right, I gotta, four of their beers. So we got to move to secondary glasses so we can keep oh. this. This has been the oh. longest six-minute review we've had Oh, it's wow. fun. All right. So, so mm. far. All right, next one. You okay? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> I had a stroke. We forgot um, a really cool bit of positive news. We should have said it earlier. Our favorite five points worker that works with us a lot, Nancy, Nancy is back on the Yay, job. Nancy. I Nancy's walked in the awesome. other day and I was like, Nancy! And she's like, I've been back for a week or two. I'm like, I've been busy, sorry. I always go through the drive-thru, so I never know. I saw her. Uh, are you sure you want to put that on record, Ryan? 
No, I probably don't. Bleep it out. <laughs> no, Nancy's beep, the best. Beep, Nancy, if you call Nancy. <laughs> oh, you meant the past thing. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the drive through thing. <laughs> Uh, Nancy will always hold beers for you. Nancy's great. We we miss we missed her. We're glad she's She'll back. literally hold it in her hand until you she get through. <laughs> Serve the next beer. No, oh, we God. love we love Nancy. We're glad she's back. All right, we're what's next? feeling better? We've had. Uh, let's do uh, Highland Clawhammer Claw Oktoberfest Lager. East to west, and uh, it doesn't say it on the. Uh, like the main part of the label, but it does say on the side that it is a full-bodied Martzen style. Martzen style. So this is not the kind of lighter fest beer. Oh, start the timer. Oh, go. We at least get to ride. Go. No, go. Go. Well, I go guess I can get me. started. So similar in color to the last What's a claw one? hammer? A uh, hammer. It's a regular claw. hammer. It's got a claw on it. That's what I thought. Is it small? I mean, it's a regular sized hammer. More than likely the hammer that you have at your Not home. a sledgehammer? No, it's not a sledgehammer. Like Sledge a six, six hammer. Right? My dad used to be in construction, so I kind of know. But did they ever call it claw hammers? No. Yeah, see, I've never heard it called a claw hammer. Claw I, know, I know exactly what they meant. But right. So what's that have to do with Oktoberfest, Jay Rice? Well, traditionally. <laughs> <laughs> Back to, they to use for a treasure hammer. fest, you need a claw hammer to <laughs> pop have, it open. Actually, I know the answer to this one. The people that set up the tents have to hammer in stakes to hold down the ropes to keep the tents no, up. No, <laughs> the, uh, not no. true. But this reminds me of one of my favorite movies of all time by the Broken Lizard Comedy Troupe, Beer Fest. Wow. That amazing is just one of the best movie. movies also ever. Also the makers also of Super Troopers and Super Troopers 2 Broken comes Lizard. out in April. Is it coming out for real? Yep. Are they, they all still together? Broken Lizard, that's the name of their group, right? Yep, yeah. all those those actors that are in <coughs> Super Troopers, Broken Lizard, Club Dread. Club Dread. Um, Slam like and movie. Salmon. I've never seen Club Dread. It was pretty good. You should watch it. It's a horror comedy. Horror it is comedy, simultaneously yeah. awesome and horrible <laughs> kind of at the same time. Is that why it's called a horror comedy? Yes. Kind of, yeah. Or is it a horror it, it's like comedy? A, it's like a murder mystery horror film but obviously also a comedy because yeah, those guys are it's not a parody it's not like watching my friend used movie. to say penelope penelope that's from that movie i know that's, yes. that's how i know about it penelope. used to say penelope that's steve Lenny. penelope what do you think of this beer i know we didn't we passed our review it's our six minute sweet. review so far has had nothing it's to do with sweet. the beers they all taste like oktoberfest beers go buy them yeah they, they, it really does you can't um, really go wrong i mean yeah. the, the the last two kind of i think were also uh marks and really um this one has a yeah, they like bread sweeter. and toast and biscuits and caramel. Yeah, sounds good. They just have Pop the and who the, doesn't the, in the south? <laughs> the Oktoberfest uh, spices, man. I, I love it. I love it. It's just awesome. <laughs> let's, drink, let's drink some more. <laughs> I, you got the, any more over there? The left hand one has more nutmeg in it. Uh, I was, I was. Well, you uh, know, to open a nutmeg, you have to use the reverse hand of a claw hammer. <laughs> he might be listening, but it's okay because. Because I made fun of him a lot this weekend. I have a particular friend that I hang out with a lot when I go to Savannah. And uh, he ordered a pumpkin beer. And then uh, he heard the bartender say something about a shandy. And he goes, oh, do you have that pumpkin shandy in stock yet? And the bartender was like, no, no, but it should be here soon. And I was like, we're not allowed to hang out anymore. If you're going to be ordering pumpkin shandies, we're yeah. done. That's my PSA. That. I wanted to start a new segment called Beer PSA. Where we do a public service announcement. I've done a few of them. <laughs> I did like, friends don't let friends drink green beers. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, PSA: Don't. It's too early for pumpkin beers. Don't yeah. drink pumpkin beers. Yeah, if you're drinking a pumpkin beer in uh, May, you know it's not right. It's not. Yeah, you're not. Well, I told him it's uh, bad. We can it's we bad. can do a PSA. And they push it so much. It's like people want. Like, people want fall so bad. Enjoy summer. Yeah. You can um, enjoy summer. It's hot. And da- down here, you can still enjoy summer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's right. I told him, uh, you know how craft beer nerds drink pumpkin beers? They pop the lid and then throw it in the trash. <laughs> so, correct me if I'm wrong, but there is a difference between pumpkin beers and pumpkin spice beers. Is that correct? There should be. So, like, there are, quote-unquote, pumpkin beers that I like. The problem is, basically, in America... Pumpkin anything just means nutmeg. nutmeg and cinnamon. Yeah. Especially nutmeg. Yeah. You can literally not put any pumpkin in a beer and call it a pumpkin beer. Most as people long do. As it tastes like yeah. nutmeg. The uh, yeah. So I haven't actually tried very many pumpkin beers, 
but anything that I've tried that was had pumpkin spice in the name is uh, quite terrible. It's I, I, I just don't like it. It just yeah, you know. To it's just own. we're be, I'm getting into me and Danny. Sour Carl would be like, yep, yeah. sure. <laughs> Sour, Sour Carl, Carl would definitely be yep. Like, <laughs> Sarah Carl, this, this is Anti Broom a- podcast is generally not a friend of the pumpkin beer. I thought that does not mean try- Hey, I, I got a six pack of dogfish head pumpkin. I listened. One, this is the darkest one. I listen to this fitness podcast called Mind Pump, and they are the the raw truth tellers in the Martin fitness Martin. world. Ant- Anti Broom is the is the mind pump of beer podcasts. Like, look, if you like pumpkin beers, that's fine. To each his own, but I'm not going to drink them. Now I'll still take a new one. We, we <laughs> Don't do, get me wrong. We definitely need a, a, a dual um, show one one day that has both uh, Georgia Beer Company and Sour Carl. Yes. Oh wow, man, we need to do that. You, we could do an episode where Sour Carl, Sour Carl. <laughs> it gets hard to say. Yeah. We Sour, should do a, a partner after you guys open. <laughs> Start saving some beers, fill growlers or, or whatever, counter pressure, whatever, and we'll do an episode where we have you guys and Sour Carl on, and he can try only all of your fruit and adjunct beers, <laughs> like all the stuff he hates. And <laughs> we are excited because this and all is of not, them like six or seven percent because he, uh-huh. he, he he hates that. Too. This is this is not going to mean anything to our listeners, but um, uh, Ryan and I are, are planning a. Um, uh, Catador Club party where we uh, crack some Catador beers with some of our past guests and Sour Carl, and we are so excited just to make him drink some of these yeah. ridiculous Cigar City <laughs> double barrel aged awesome. chocolate coffee raisin peanut butter <laughs> charcoal. <laughs> well, that was that was our entire Christmas episode last year. Yeah. Was yeah, it was forcing great. Sour Carl to drink. We're gonna do it again this high year. High ABV barrel aged adjunct. Well, we wrote a little story. Remember the remember the ballast point one that was like oh, raisins and cinnamon, <laughs> and he he smelled it. And he's like, I hate you guys. <laughs> we love sour Carl. Oh yeah, we do. Oh okay, yeah. All right. Oh one minute. Yeah. This is left hand Oktoberfest. Martin. All right. This is much darker than the than the rest. We're, of we're getting darker. real Martin here. It's funny because it gets. It seems the farther we get from Tanzania, from mm. Germany, the sweeter we get. This Just one is very, very sweet, 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 very sweet. This one, uh, very malty. Yes, very Still malty, very though. sweet. Yeah. It's hard to not like the style. So it's that time of year. It is the. I mean, at least where I'm from in Illinois, the leaves are turning orange, falling off the trees. It's time. What's the ABV on that? I don't want to say stronger, but it's got the it, everything that was in the previous beers. It's there's six more, point six. More in this one. Yes. Six point six. I actually saved these two for last because this one's six point six, this one's six. Um, and normally, it's actually, higher. Um, I've just been so busy because of the hurricane and and uh, classical music gigs that I didn't put the effort I should have. Normally, I'm the one in the podcast planning that puts into our little plan all of the like the city it's from, the ABV, and the style. But you know what? Yeah, I know yeah, where this is from. It. It's from Colorado. These are all October it's from Longmont. Yes. I got lots of friends in Longmont. I got some friends from a little city outside of Longmont Actually, called I like Hygiene. That. I like that. Why don't we go hygiene. Through, why, why, hygiene, Colorado. Why don't we go through that? Because I, I like that idea. Okay. This is from Longmont, Colorado. Um, you said this was Six Maryland. percent. Six Mar- point. Maryland. 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 That's Maryland. Baltimore. Baltimore. Yep. Uh, Highland is from Asheville, right? Asheville, North Carolina. Yep. Iyengar is from Iying, Germany. And Hoffman is from Munich. 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 Yep. Cool. And what's the last beer we got? Last one is uh, Ballast Point. And that's from San Diego. California. Right? I thought it was San Diego. Uh, it's definitely California. San Diego, yep. And we won't mention the fact that they are actually currently... They've been uh, partnered with a, a big guy, right? They sold out. Really? They have good beers. They're, uh, yeah, they're, uh, they've gotten bigger and bigger and bigger, you know. But I'm sure this is still the same. Never forget their sculpting. It's called Dead Ringer. It's good stuff. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, actually, they're getting on that uh, hazy IPA, and they have unfiltered sculpting. (laughs) How many different sculptings do they have? Pineapple. Honestly, when they they sold out, it exploded. Yeah. You can get like pineapple and habanero and unfiltered. You can get for a while. Craft on draft had both of them, and you could give it mixed. Yeah, really, yeah. it was pretty good. Maybe just like 
a third of the habanero and two thirds pineapple. Nice, good stuff. So this is Ballast Point Dead Ringer Oktoberfest traditional Martzen. It this, says right on it. This one I believe is darker I, than the last. I think we have gone light to dark. Gone dark, yeah. Yep. yeah. I said right, I, didn't, start I said I didn't plan it, but maybe I did. There you go. It's kind of funny. He's got like a a, a skeleton wearing a, a leader hose. Dead ringer, get it? It's gonna be a long episode. <laughs> we didn't actually start until like 15 minutes in, but we're still already at like an hour 15. We still haven't done really? Caspian other. You guys are usually hour and a half, right? We're just having a good time. Yeah, we shoot for an hour. <laughs> it's never that though. Well, it's I never like, that. I, this I one's probably gonna be like a two-hour episode. I don't know how true it is, but I feel like uh, well, it's been fun because you're fun. Which All right, hang on, we gotta get done with this. Oh, the beer. Yeah, the beer, the beer, <laughs> the beer. All right, dark. Uh, it's a little more spicy than uh, than this one. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like it's maltier, but not as sweet. It's much more. Yeah, it's not, it's not sweet. sweet. It's right. much more toasty biscuits. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. This might be my fave. I, like I don't know. It. I think it's my favorite of the non-German ones. Oh no, I think I like the the sweetness. I think I prefer the, the you like this one, that one better. Yeah, this has been the sweetest. Yep, it's it's like two different beers almost. The yep. German ones were almost totally different entities, which is strange. I think if I yeah, are, are we going to vote on yeah? The black I, I think Oktoberfest is mm -hmm. tosses. You know, drink it, drink it, no, um, no. drink it. Drink um, it. anything left in any of those? Yeah. Oh. There you go. I call this one. Can I call this one? Drink yeah. This is my favorite. Dibs. Dibs. Um, I like them all. <laughs> I I like the ballast point. I say it's um, a six way tie for first. There you go. <laughs> no, it's. Likes I, the six -way. I think I can, the out of the Germans, I think I preferred the I, the Hofbrau. Yeah. Though either one of them, like, if you want a more authentic taste, go with the German ones. Out of the American ones, I think I like maybe the Ballast Point the most. We can't say that. They're the sellouts. Okay, I like... Yeah. They're good. It's still good. It's still good. I mean, we can't bad mouth a sponsored beer. They're all great. I mean, Although all, I chose them. <laughs> if you bought any of these, you would not be disappointed. we got to right. separate the bottles because they're making noise. I think uh, I would... Uh, the Hawk Raw Oktoberfest beer. This one's my favorite. There you go. I like it the most. It's... Uh, if you're looking to uh, enjoy several beer, this would be the one. It's yeah. lighter, crisper. Several beer. Yeah, several beers. Like we've had. Uh, that 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 would be my first choice. My second choice would be the oh, Treasure Fist. This one. The Claw Hammer. The cl no. Uh, that's the. This guy. The. Uh, left hand. Left hand. Left hand. I like this one. I like the sweetness of it. Oh no, that may be weird, but I like it. It is. It's way sweeter than any of the other ones. So. We appreciate five points for providing this. Thank you very much. Uh, go pick up two or three six packs and do your own taste test, and let us know what you think because we want it, to know. Yeah, I, I think like everybody has kind of different tastes. Some of it's just kind of how much sweetness you want compared to how much rose to it. But uh, we love six packs, uh, or we love five points. We love the six pack Rocktober October review. And we're going to move right along since we are running late. We're going to do Cast Me Another. Ooh, All right. We, for we do. So I'm going to go ahead and start while you get that out. All right. All right. Is this right. timed? No, nah, you just no. answer when I will. Okay. All right. This was supposed to be with both you and Chris were here, but since he's not here, you get to answer. Yay. First Oktoberfest at GBC, there's only one outfit each for both of you. Who wears the lederhosen? And who wears the Drindle? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. For listeners so, that may not know, basically that's the the, the female dress thing. Who wears yes. Who wears the Lederhosen? Who wears the busty Ger uh, German beer wench? One of the most that, popular Halloween that, costumes yeah, of I'm all sure time. That, yeah. that, yes, uh, that's a toughie. I think I have an answer. I would uh, opt to be the female in this in this situation. What a good partner! Well, I, I, well, well. It, there's kind of a backstory, so uh, <laughs> you know. I, well, this I, ended I, up going I, way deeper than I we played, could have imagined. I played I, I played sports in in high school, and uh, lifted a lot of weights. So, I mean, I, I'm a, I'm a little more busty than Chris is. So I think I would I would uh, 
I would be able to represent the, the Durndal a little better than he would. There you go. So I would let him. So your answer let, is you'd fill it out better? I would fill it out better, <laughs> in my opinion. So I would let him do the leader host. And you heard it here first. Better. Jay Rice, Take bustier he's going, the JBC, he's GBC. Going, he's going to uncontrollably laugh. When he, when he, when he <laughs> you think he'll listen? I think he's going to think, man, I got a good part. All right, before we go <laughs> on, on our team, before we go on, um, in honor of our anniversary and the return of our uh, first ever guest. We're cracking a special beer. Ryan and I are Cigar City Caterville Club nice. members, which is a um, exclusive club where you're a member, you get access to special club only member barrel aged beers. And so we tossed the, uh, this is from the latest Catador Club, whiskey barrel aged Imperial Milk Porter in the fridge to crack in honor of our first anniversary. And Jay Rice, and we appreciate Chris you coming back. back and, and sorry, Chris. Ha ha. So yeah, it's uh, it's actually uh, weird how it and worked out, you know. You'll have to slam that or pour it in another glass. Uh, over the years, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll I've slam, been a member of Catador for many years since the beginning. Actually, what are, what am I on seven now? I think we've you done seven. Yeah, right? seven was the recent. Well, I was a member for here. many years before you joined on. Maybe not like many, two. but a few. And. Uh, so I have a bunch of these glasses. So we all actually have the designed Category Cat Club Stout Barrel Age glass. Nice. Yep. To enjoy. That's how we roll here on Anti Room. All right. Follow up question you can get your between Chris one. and you: Who drinks from the Stein? Who drinks from Das Boot? Ooh. I uh, I would have to say I would drink from the Boot. Uh, he would drink from the Stein, only because for some weird reason. He uh he drinks slower than I do. Whatever. I, I, don't, I don't understand. Uh, I don't know. He he would agree to that though. So you're so, wearing a dress and you're slamming a boot. Does that contribute to your bustiness? <laughs> it could. Okay, it here could. we go. Best Valdosta location to secretly drink a beer. Best Valdosta location to secretly drink a beer. This is um uh, uh a- any location. I mean, we're not talking about the side of the road. We're talking about a, 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 hey, a, wherever you like a, to secretly a, drink beer, an establishment or no, you can, dude, no, no, uh, wherever you want, wherever you want to drink a beer. I have a good one. Okay, uh, actually, uh, uh, the building. No. Oh yeah, oh, that, that nice. would be nice. Yeah, dude, it, it, it I'm is, gonna do that tonight. It, it is really cool. <laughs> it is really cool. So we 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 have the uh, 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 since we are in this deal. We have the ability to go in there and, and you know, uh, do things that... Are you sure you can say this on the record? <laughs> I, I, I think so. I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying to phrase my words correctly. But uh, we have a key to the building. Why not? Nice. We're, we're going to be in the building. Be uh, so, uh, actually, not too long ago, uh, some friends from out of town came down, and we went to the building um, and kind of showed them around, but it was really dark, and it was super cool. Oh, yeah. right. Being in the the building itself is awesome. So you want to do like so if we're talking secretly drinking beer, that would be a cool place to secretly drink beer. It's kind of creepy. Fantastic. Too. That's awesome. All right, we so, forgot because so, I was getting the beer on. We forgot to do the intro. So we are now in. What? What are you talking about? We, we forgot to do the cast me another. We practiced this now. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, one of you say we are now yeah. about to start. Cast me another, or we ask smart beer people. Dumb beer questions. That's right. <laughs> now Except that, that it's already started. Now that we're two questions deep, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're very deep into it. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, hang on. I kind of missed the whole thing yes. about this. Category so, Club. This is uh, Whiskey Barrel Age Imperial Milk Porter. Ooh. So you can only get this beer if you're a part of the Gotta be a part Category of the Club. club. Oh, but man. this is our way of, A, saying thank you to Jay Rice for taking his time to come out, and B, kind of celebrating... We've been doing this for a year now, and we love it. I think we would do it if nobody listened to it. You know, yeah. people do. Thankfully, thanks yeah. guys. But we, you know, we want to. But Imperial. but we we are honored that we have as many people who actually care about it and listen to it as we do. We really, you know, Danny and I really take it as serious as you can take a beer podcast. As far as we want to make it good quality, we want to have good people. We want good good but information also fun. for you. But we want to make it entertaining. And so when we started this, we didn't know where it was going to go. I think we've got better guests, and we've certainly got better at being hosts, though this episode might be the exception. We're going way off track, but, but, no, but we, we, we love it. Yeah, it's fun. Can play off each other. So, here, cheers. Here's to one year of Anti Broom. Yes. Cheers. And to Thanks George to Beer Company. Yep. Prost. 
Uh, Chris is going to be insanely jealous about the spirits. Really. If he comes to the party, there may be oh, many, many more. Not he can all, always yeah, again, not to alienate smell the, listeners, the alcohol but... in, in an Although, imperial. Chris just marked uh, yes to our private yeah. Facebook event, so at least yeah. he's coming. Very good. Uh, unless he gets a job, call. <laughs> Chris, I, 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 see, I see no reason why I shouldn't be able to make it. Um, Sweet. it it's ahead of time. Nobody's yeah. playing anything yet, so I don't see why not. That's why we did it early. Right. It's going to be awesome. It, so I think it's, it's, it's going to be, be like South Georgia uh, Brewers so, Conference. Too. Part of it, Brewers. Talk, talking about us, like, a part of this whole mission of us that a lot of our guests have really appreciated is, like, we really want to bring more attention to South Georgia craft beer. Right. And, like, part of us having this event or this little tasting where all of our past guests get together is that... All of you have all of you have a Man, hilarious and awesome toasty. example to get together and meet each other. Yeah, like right. collaborations can happen that night. I think that's really like, cool. And it's both going to be breweries that are open. You yeah. know, if Piedmont comes and Pretoria comes, and, uh, and places that are going to open yeah. soon. Yeah, yeah, you guys. And then totally also the that. people that are just getting started. We're inviting uh, Big Oak, Big Oak, and, you got Big Oak. Uh, Thrasher, who's cool. coming next uh, month. I was going to ask you about those guys. If you guys have heard anything about them, you know. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I, ju- uh, they, I just learned about them the other they, day. They uh, replied to me immediately on Instagram and uh, Facebook, and they'll be here next month cool. for our podcast. Yeah. Cool. I don't know anything and about. We them. invited them to the party as well. Awesome. And awesome. also um, Armadillo, I think, is going to come from Kingsland, Georgia. Okay. And Brackish from St. Mary's, which is already open. Man, that's but, awesome. Man. Yeah, we're going to do like oh, an anti brew Christmas here. card. Here. Yeah, yeah. my place. Nice. So it's a. Uh, you know, we're excited about it, and hopefully, some great things will come out of it that we can. We want Brian report. actually said like we should call it like South Georgia Brewers Conference. But I'm like, that's a little ambitious. Oh, to just ever at my house, South, <laughs> South we call this a Coalition. podcast, and that's a little ambitious sometimes. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so like, hey, that night, that night it might be really cool. You know, we'll be in the midst. Awesome. Just uh, we'll have somebody the, who can pick you up. We'll be in the midst of construction. And so we might just take a little deep. Oh, we could take a little deep. beer. It's it's literally right there. Like it's I know people think I people fun. that listen probably think I'm joking when I say I can see the building it's from my driveway. Right over there. No, you can see the bit. You can I, I can you literally can see, see the building yeah. from and not like oh it's miles away. Like it's borderline across the street yeah. Yeah. from my house. Yep. Which we'll is have to a go blessing before and a curse. We drink like before we drink it's it's a busy road well it, it is a busy road but we're just walking that's true we are just walking oh we'll definitely just walk after the it's party we can walk up to a it's, crosswalk yeah or we can just run across yeah, just yeah, run yeah. across if, no <laughs> we will not we will not <laughs> we're, we're, this is one of those things in like, tragic news today <laughs> all of Georgia's brewing community was wiped <laughs> ironically a malt delivery truck <laughs> struck and killed Every South Georgia brewer. Oh, it, was Georgia brewer. <laughs> it was a Budweiser. It was a Budweiser truck. <laughs> it's like they knew. <laughs> oh, that was perfect. Funny. So anyway, this this uh, Cigar City Barrel Age. It's very tasty. good. It's very, very good. Tasty. Wayne, um, Joey, Justin, everyone, thanks. It's awesome. We appreciate it. Uh, really, really toasty. All right. All right. We gotta keep going. Cast me yeah. another. Best beer to drink warm when you have no power due to a hurricane. Mm. Oh. Uh, speaking from personal experience. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and this answer may be answers to other types of questions. Uh, I'm going to say Yingling Light. It's kind of my go-to beer. There you go. Uh, Even warm? Yeah. Well, I mean, you don't have to worry about uh, what you gotta do. Wa- wasting away any... This uh, is true. Any uh, you know aroma or anything? You know, it's a, it's a light beer. Can it you is. Pour it up. Drink it. I once did a. Uh, uh, I visited a rate beer friend in New Jersey that I had never met before in person, and uh, his name's James. He probably doesn't listen. James. He care. Uh, a unique thing about him was when he rates beers. He's a hardcore rate beerian like myself. Uh-huh. He will only rates beers. Like room temperature, really? Why? And uh, to get all of the flavor and aromas out of the warmth. And uh, mm. but what's funny about that is uh, 
Because, I mean, many people could argue there are appropriate temperatures for appropriate styles. It's supposed to be, yeah. So what yeah, was funny about it was... Uh, most of them are not room temperature. At the time... Yeah, I, no, I don't think the, any of them are room temperature. At the time I happened to visit him, even though he's a hardcore beer nerd, really into crazy, the rare stuff, all that, uh, he also is a, a degenerate ticker like me. He'll rate literally anything. And it just happened to be right when I visited him, his parents had just been on a cruise. He was rating a cruise. And so... <laughs> well, I, I, I drank a bunch of really terrible like Dominican and Bahamian beers, mm-hmm. like the Warm. world's worst pale lagers, room temperature, <laughs> mm. and it was like, Ugh. sounds like I the see best. Why people? You know, sounds like a good beer tasting right there. I could. Uh, well, at the same time, we had several super rare, amazing beers. Yeah, so. I could kind of understand that tasting them at room temperature. Yeah, he I mean, I to guess to get flavors makes out, sense. to get the flavors warmer, out, to get all the flavor. Yeah. In. yeah, in theory, the warmer the beer is, I mean, to a certain extent, you don't want to like exactly. Heat it right, up. right, right, yeah. right. Room temperature is just it, right. it's you're going to get the most potential aroma and flavor components. That makes sense. Very good. I would like to meet this man. <laughs> He's a super nice guy. I've met him at several rate beer yeah. stuff. Now you cool. met him uh, at the rate beer gathering in Tampa. What's his name? James. James. Uh, online it's J T something. Clockwork. No. JT. Um, no, it is JT Clockwork. What is the quality the podcast? ABV on this thing? It is JT Clockwork. Hi, James. Why did you say I thir- said no? Thir- 13.7. Oh, they're That's strong. Cool. All the category beers are super strong. Here, I'll let you look for it. All right, I'm going to ask you another question. Okay. I'll look. You um, guys cast me another. Okay. What type of sandwich is the best to make a beer into? Good Lord. And what is the worst type of sandwich to make a beer into? I fancy myself as a sandwich fan, oh, wow. so I should be able to answer this question no problem. Uh, sandwich beer, do you choose? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have an answer for worst. You know, um, this is more difficult than I thought. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to kind of go into the realm of Subway sandwiches here. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> like this is going. The, the ben, the, uh, could you repeat the question for for five hundred, please? Yes. What type of sandwich is the best to make a beer into? What is the worst type of sandwich to make into a beer? Okay, uh, the the best I would say uh, uh, cold cut trio mm-hmm. from Subway. Um, uh, <laughs> I have no particular reason why. Um, I would drink a cold cut beer. <laughs> The worst, maybe the Italian BMT, which is actually, <laughs> actually my favorite sandwich. But it would, I think, it would make a terrible beer. Because What's the BMT so stand for? Um, bacon. If the BMT stands stands for a, a beverage malt, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I was thinking Cuban would be the worst because I hate mustard and pickles. So yeah, I have something to add on to that. So, a, a, any uh, authentic Mexican restaurant that I've been to, when I order the Cuban sandwich, it comes out. It's good. I like it. There's hot dog in it. What? <laughs> I'm ninety percent sure it's hot dog. What do you mean? There's the, a hot dog in it. These are now. I, I won't name any names, but these are two. As, authentic, as authentic as you can get in one in Valdosta and one in Moultrie that I've been to. And There's only one in Valdosta, so. There's a couple. I, I still will not name any names, but we're probably talking about the same one. Uh, yeah, so and, and, unless I'm, I'm missing something and that this particular piece of meat is just, it just happens to be that shape. It looks like a hot dog that has been quartered lengthways. Maybe it's a chorizo. I don't know, no, man. I no, for, it's it not might be some sort of like bologna. It, it can't be that bologna or something. Maybe I don't know, but summer you look at it and you, you I even like took, torta cubana. I even took it out of the sandwich and I was like, oh, "This is hot dog." I think that might be their pork version. In of fairness, cubana. hot dogs are way more exotic. In Mexico. I mean, you know, I ate it and I didn't have a problem with it. I really enjoyed it, anyways. So, hey, 
Hey, it's all but, good. But hot dog beer, though, you know, to, to, to kind of... Hot dog beer sounds bad. Yeah. So I was so, thinking Reuben, Reuben beer might be good. Oh, that was good. Oh, no. Yeah, that, that was no. You could do Reuben beer right. and pair it with... No, not October. Reuben. I'm, Reuben would be bad. Um, you could pair it with Oktoberfest Monte beer. Monte Cristo is what I'm thinking. Monte oh, Cristo I beer might that. be okay. Oh, yeah, deep with fried, the deep fried. Deep fried. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're on also, the beer I, association. I think this is actually one of the lesser ones. The last time they made this beer, this one doesn't say... We're talking about for those listening. I'm talking about the Cigar City beer. This bottle doesn't say the last time they made this because they actually made this beer in the past, pre Catador, right. like a long, long time ago. It was only nine percent. Oh, okay. It tastes like there's more than nine percent. Yeah, it, it kind of does. I can right. smell the alcohol. We're on to beer associations. Um, I will name a um, person, famous person. You tell me a beer. Either a beer, a beer style, or a brewery that you think fits with that person. Shit. All right? Okay. Here we go. Number one. Callous Cowboy and Meandering Mosier, John Wayne. Uh, uh, th- this is a beer that describes him or that, he, w- yeah, that he would drink? Matter. Don't yep. overthink it. Okay. Uh, stout, because he's... Out. He is stout. Oh. See, is my, stout. my knee, knee jerk reaction was like, but heavy. I mean, but, but heavy would be good. old school than that. So, like, Schlitz. Or I, hands. Schlitz. I didn't want to say a, good. a light lager like that because I might say yeah, that. Yeah, that's offending. I might, the, I might say it's that. It's offensive to the Duke. Well, I might say that quite often in this segment, so I'm not sure. All right, here we go. Spaghetti Slinger, Chef Boyardee. <laughs> <laughs> What's Chef Boyardee drinking? Is he real? I don't know. Uh, Chef Boy RD. Um, he's probably drinking um, an amber ale. I have, okay. I have no reason. I, no, I can that. see that amber would go with spaghetti. Mamma Mia pizza beer. Oh, God. I Gross. mean, if there's such a thing for sure. There All is. Right. Is there? Mamma yeah. Mia pizza beer. No way. It's got like tomato paste, and yeah. herbs, yeah. and spices. Yeah. Yeah. If you have it on yeah. its own, it's very weird. First time I had it, I had it on its own. It was very weird. Second time I had it, I had it with a calzone. Not that weird. Because really? the food canceled out. Kind of the that's, weirdness of it. That's interesting. I totally uh, can see that. All right. Mega Rich, Megabyte Mogul, Bill Gates. What's Bill Gates drinking? Uh, Bill Gates, he, he drinks something fancy, man. He's uh, he, he's going to be drinking this here. There you go. This uh, Imperial Milk Porter by Cigar City Brewing. That's what uh, Whiskey Barrel aged. He probably is. He is probably a member of the club. That is what he is drinking. Darius yeah. was looking at my bar key. That's I like that. From the Catador Club. That's Catador awesome, Club. Can't part, of, part of a bar kit we got, which had a, this bar key, a towel. He gets this, he gets this awesome bottle opener, and I get a towel. I get a towel <laughs> and a, a cooler bag. They, so they stamped this. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's pretty a, nice. That's heavy duty, man. Yeah. It's cool. pretty nice. It is Look, cool. Ryan, I'm the one that sets it all up. You know, I'm the one that drives down and gets the beers. You got a towel. You're going to Tallahassee to drink other beer. I've driven to Tampa before. He got a bottle opener and you got a towel. It's That's a bar towel, to be fair. I don't know what the hell you do with a bar towel. I, I, it's Maybe not I, any I'll different. You got a cooler bit. bag, too. And you I don't know what I'm going to do with that cooler bag. <laughs> Happy little tree homeboy, Bob Ross. Bob Ross. What's he, what's he paint? What's he drinking while he's painting? Um, I have... The best answer. Uh, I'm gonna go with. Uh, huh. Grapefruit shandy. Ooh, I can see that. That fits. That's that fits him so. perfect. Yeah, I think, think so. I was gonna say nut brown ale. <laughs> Not bad. Squirrels. Not bad. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, some episodes he has. A pet squirrel that he like adopted. That's not true. It is true. That's not well true. Be. That's that not true. They are drinking nut brown ale to do. <laughs> you read that from the internet or no. something. No, that's not true. All right, Munchies, loving mopers, and cowardly couple, Shaggy and Scooby Doo. What's the Shagster drinking? You really, you really got this. This dude, is my thing, dude. That's on time, man. That's awesome. All right, Shag, Shaggy and Scooby Doo. Yeah, well, I figured they'll split a beer. All right, so he's a dog. So they. <laughs> So, uh, that's no, that's way. Photoshop. 
That's totally no Photoshop. Way, For the listeners, I Googled and brought up a picture of Bob Ross with his pet squirrel. <laughs> listeners, please email Danny and tell him that Bob Ross did not paint Yeah, email squirrels. Danny at antibroom.com. Because <laughs> that, that definitely exists. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> I forgot what we were even talking about. All right, uh, Shaggy and Scooby-Doo. Shaggy and Scooby-Doo wants their beer. Uh, All right, so they're scared of everything, man, no matter the circumstances. So they will be afraid of anything that's crazy. So they're going to drink some standard stuff. I'm going to go with Pilsner. Pilsner. They would. They would go. They would. They'd stay safe. (laughs) I suppose. (laughs) Oh, Uh, no, Scooby. I know. (laughs) This one's got chili peppers and chocolate. (laughs) Uh Oh, I was trying. I was thinking about doing my Shaggy impression. I'm like, no, somebody else is gonna do it. And Danny <laughs> Carl <Carl-Roll. laughs> <Robert Carl-Roll laughs> and Shaggy. Retro, imperial stout. Retro. Oh, I think this one has ghost peppers. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Slim, <laughs> Slim Jim snapping, fringed fighter, Macho Man, Randy Savage. What's the Macho Man drinking? Well, let me tell you what he's gonna be drinking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I didn't get the fringe spider thing until just now. Uh, yeah, yeah. Side note: I was an Ultimate <laughs> Warrior fan. The Macho Man, he loves the power. What's he gonna be drinking? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, uh, brother. I, 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 I kind of like to think myself as uh, Macho Man, so <laughs> uh, I'm gonna kind of go with one of my favorites. Uh, I'm gonna say he likes to stick with pale ales, or excuse me, IP stuff, IPAs. Yeah, you know, he's he's a decent human being. What's he drinking? Uh, I think he's drinking. <clears> his the, favorite's 420, man. Oh, I, th- I thought you were gonna say J- GBC. You lost your opportunity. Oh, uh, Every guest has to say their own brewery. Of course. Okay, I'll, I'll say it. Softball. Toothy. Toothy. Wonderful actress Julia Roberts. What's she drinking? Oh, she is drinking the peach handy. There you go. Very good. She's pretty woman. Buried course. it. Buried it. That's All exactly right. what she's drinking. Now it's time for my favorite segment, the uh, Craft, Craft Beer Dad, Dad Joke, Joke of, of the, the month. month, brought to you by which bar? I didn't send out those messages yet. All right. Oh, brought man. to you by whatever bar wants to sponsor us next month. All Speaking right. of, come next early spring, we can do a live episode at GBC again. Yeah, we okay. can do that. Okay. We can just do a yearly thing next month. I'm going to make this one quick. Go back. For sure. Yep. So uh, a snowman walks into a bar. No, we gotta say a bar. Gotta pick a bar. We'll say GBC. Okay. okay. So unless, they're order, order, unless they're gonna order GBC. a liquor or something. No, no, no. Uh, snowman walks into GBC. Yeah. He orders. He says, "Okay, give me a flight." And so Jay Rice behind the bar. He pours up a flight. And the first one he takes. It's the uh, IPA. Snowman sniffs it. Oh, kind of pulls his head back in disgust. And he drinks it. Ooh, that's good. He puts it down. The second one he pulls out is the uh, pecan porter. Takes a sniff. (laughs) Takes a drink. Oh, that's good. (laughs) Puts it down. Takes the third beer. It's the uh, the uh, peach shandy. Sniffs it. Oh, gross. But then he drinks it. Slams it down. Dang, that's good. Takes the last one. Takes the colch. Sniffs. Oh. And then he drinks it and he loves it, smells it down. So Jay Rice comes over and he says, So what do you think of the beers? Oh, the beers taste great. But they all smell just like carrots. I saw that coming a mile away. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, anybody listening on iTunes, you need to go watch the YouTube video yeah, because Ryan was uh, pantomiming the shit out that, of that. That was that was it my best hysterical. Snowman. Yes. Okay. Uh, at least I did it fast. I, I didn't know that joke, but I I, I, so knew, I knew it was going in that direction. I thought it was going to be one of two endings. Either they all smell like carrot, or the joke was going to be that his nose was so long <laughs> that it was stuck in something else. Uh, <laughs> like, I, it all I, smells I, like that dog I was, butt. Totally, I was totally surprised, man. It was awesome. That good. was good. It's a good one. Jeez. Are you ever going to run out of these? Like, I got to call my dad up and get some new ones. <laughs> I, I literally you get these from my dad. You should, you should be able to come up with these yourself. Oh, man. All I know is that this podcast that has gone long because all three of us are mushrooms. Oh, That's fine, man. Just a bunch of fun guys. Just a bunch of fun guys. All right, let's thank some sponsors. Our sponsors today, Five Points, Fine Wine, Spirits, 
Thank you for pro providing all these quality Oktoberfest beers. They've been getting good stuff in. Go check them out. Always, always happy beers. to help. Always new beers. Always. Uh, and they're the, I think it's safe to say, best place in town to get beer. So we appreciate everything beer, they do. Hands down. They, they will all, uh, if you go and request something, they will also get it for you as fast well, as they can. That happened to you can. recently. Yeah, like someone, yes, so, uh, one so, of your family members or something wanted a right, specific so, gluten-free so, beer. So my, my sister uh, is on a, a gluten-free diet, mm -hmm. and she is very strict about it, and I uh, support her fully. And so a, a lot of times the beer that I brew, you know, she, she just simply can't drink them. And, uh, you know, it makes me feel bad, you know, it's like, you know, because she wants to, and, and I know that she would like them if she did, but, you know, it would, it, it would, it would literally make her sick. Mm. So, uh, so uh, uh, it was actually at a Vorloff meeting. Mm -hmm. Somebody bought, brought... Uh, Vorloff's local homebrew club. Yeah, yep. yeah, uh, Glutenberg. Yeah. Is, yeah, 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 I've seen it. <clears throat> and uh, I uh, actually asked uh, one of our members who uh, works for a distribution company, uh, or I, I mentioned it on the Facebook page, and he Bill, yeah, we talk about Bill. All okay, time. okay, yeah. Bill, yeah, Bill. Okay, uh, he uh, local craft distributor. Oh yeah, he uh, so he replied about it. He said, "Hey man, you know, uh, I already got it for you coming. That's five awesome. points, go five check points. it out." Yeah. Five, he's like and, five uh, points will get whatever yeah, you want. Yeah, five points yep. to get whatever you want. And uh, they had it. I went over there, picked it up, and my uh, I bought uh, bought uh, it's like they're huge. They're yeah. like twenty ounce, twenty four ounce things. They're huge things. Uh, uh, twenty four ounce cans. And so I, I got some and uh, I took it to my sister. She loved it. But uh, they they were little, literally go out of their way. Five points will to to get what you want. They do. They're great people. They they'll help you out every time. And once uh, when GBC gets packaging. Guarantee it'll be at five points. Certainly. I would hope so. Certainly will. I'd hope so. We also want to thank Daniel Opal for making our awesome uh, anti-brewum logo. Always. Um, uh, maybe some point in the future we'll do another run of t-shirts because people see. I, I wear mine out quite often. All people time. always ask them. And I had a really great conversation with um, the bartender at Coastal Empire this weekend, mm -hmm. Miles and Spanish, who, it, not related to beer, but he's a local... Uh, he works at Coastal Empire part time. His real job is he's like a radio DJ, no. radio host. He and he's like, yeah. He was like, I've interviewed all the other breweries in town. You need to talk to so and so from Southbound and so and so from Service and so and so from. And I was like, oh, cool, thanks. We will <laughs> if they let and, us. And uh, thanks to our Patreon subscribers, Berg, happy birthday, and my mom, maybe hit her up. Maybe hit her up, probably. She hey. just bought me a bunch of costumes for Tubaween, so she nice. made me. Gun child. She loves anti broom. She does. She, tell her, you know tell her I'll uh, take care of uh, Tubaween for her. I don't uh, even know if I've said this to this Ryan. To the and the listeners may not believe this, but my mom actually listens to these. And um, a lot of times, what she does is uh, kind of fast forwards a little bit mm -hmm. through the guest interview. And then she listens to the uh, six pack review and the cast me another and laughs. And thinks they're hilarious. <laughs> so, I mean, that's they're what actually you should good. do. You know, into the beer. Well, to be they're fair, worth my mom lives in northwestern Illinois. So, I mean, well, we're, and, we're a pretty specialized podcast. Yes. Well, and she, she's yes. not a beer drinker, um, she's more of a wine martini gal. But uh, especially South Georgia craft. Did you just beer. call your mom a wine martini gal? She is. Wine She'll appreciate martini. that. Wine martini. Yeah, she likes martinis. She likes all the goofy You can't call your like mom a gal. Peanut. Why? Go ahead. Go ahead. Point is. She's she's one of the sweetest she ladies. She gets a big kick. And she supports she's, us, and we appreciate her. Listen to those. And, and she I loves will, that we talk I'm going to take her. over Tuba Wing, because I know your mom, like, your mom did a great job, and she handed out candy, so I know she would want to be here, but I'm going to make sure when she comes back next year that this tradition has continued I've helped her out in that. And my dad was funny last year. Remember last year he dressed like a hobo? He did. And he had a sign that said, Will Tuba for candy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I went over and put candy in his box. <laughs> Very good. All right. Um, and thanks to George Beer Company. Of course. Jay Rice hey, and Chris. We really appreciate yeah. you coming on. We can't over-exaggerate this enough how excited we are for you to be open. We are too. Man. And uh, so. tasting your beers is not going to make me any less excited. All four of your beers <laughs> are really great today. You know, I, and, I, uh, I really wish that uh, we could be on here at the same time. Yeah. Finally, last time, you know, it was just Chris. You, you know, Chris. I think a month or two before when you're, when you're getting ready for grand opening, yeah. we can do another one. I don't Sorry, think we'd miss we a beat. We could do, uh, you know, I, I, 
especially lately because I'm getting back into gig season, so I'm driving a lot. Uh-huh. I listen to a lot of podcasts. We could do even if we just do a little mini cast. Yeah, a little update. Sure. You guys pop in and we do 20 minutes. Say hey. There's no way. We're, we're on two hours. There's no way we're gonna do 20 minutes. 20 minutes, minutes should be tough. Holy cow! This might be our yeah. longest episode. Awesome. Yeah. awesome. Well, there was a good 15, that's 20 minutes at the beginning really of this awesome little thing. You guys want to hang get... out with me, and that's what that is. That's the way it rolls. Um, make sure you fiesta responsibly. Know your limits. Don't drive. You've been drinking. Make sure you're of legal age. All those things. We want uh, Valdosta has Uber now. Yeah, yes, we want we want craft beer to be a good thing, so not to be a, GBC a, dr- a destructive thing. You know, Uber be, 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 yep. be cool. Be cool is all I gotta say. Ever related cool. story? I was blown away. Me, damn me a little bit. I was uh, in. There's a there's a nice little convenience store right right by where I gig, uh-huh. where I famously got you a six pack of El Trio. Yes, that was famous. Um, and I actually just went in there to get a bottle of water. And there was a middle-aged lady in there, animatedly discussing with the shopkeep about, this is in Savannah if I didn't say that, about how and where she could get a cab. And the guy was like, pretty much anywhere, you're in a very busy part of a major city, just go outside and wave down a cab. She's like, right here? Right here on Broughton Street? He's like, well, maybe, but if you can't find one, Call one. He's like, go to the Hyatt. It's a hotel right around the corner. And they have a cab station. Yeah. And you can wave down a cab there, or there might just be a cab there. And I was standing in line <coughs> this whole time. I was just waiting to buy one bottle of water. So I was kind of annoyed. And I, it was really hard for me to not to go like, get an Uber! You right. It's 2017! You gotta download the app, man. Do you not have a smartphone? Are you shitting me right now? Cab. Walk. Get an Uber. I'll just drunk drive and ruin my life. Yeah. Well, she wasn't <laughs> drunk or anything. She just needed a cab for some reason. I don't know why. But it's like just get an Uber. All right. You don't have to anyway, be responsible, push, people. Push, uh, push Even social media. Awesome. What's your guys' social media? I'm sorry. What social media? George Beer Company. Push your social media. Yeah, yeah man. Uh, Instagram. Uh, I know you got Facebook, Instagram. Certainly, man. You just go on e- e- uh, any of the major social media websites and you. Uh, Search for Georgia Beer Company. You guys are really good about updating stuff too. Or yeah. Georgia Beer Co. Oh, Georgia yes. Beer Co. Very Could good. be that. Uh, I know from experience from tagging these guys. Basically, if you just start typing Georgia Beer, it'll come up. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. What's our yeah. social media? Occasionally, it might be G A Beer. Maybe like Twitter. Maybe like G A Beer Co. Possibly. I don't know. Chris usually handles a lot of the social media stuff, so I'm a little little bit out of my realm. But Chris, just sure Google it. Sure Chris, you can find it. You can just Google it. Social it's, media. It's, Go to the uh, website, and just all the links are there. Yeah. Yep. Don't 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 just uh, start and then just give up. You We're lucky in that we make, have a, make an attempt, and you will be able to find. Yeah, this. it's not it's not hard to find. We're lucky in that we have a unique name. Yeah, you so look up Anta Brew, and we're there. <laughs> we have not had to do any shortcuts or abbreviations or anything. You have to spell it correctly. Anta Brew, by the way, it's not a real word. Yeah, There's Ryan, no correct spelling. Ryan does That's tend true. to say Anti Brew. Yeah, I say Anta I think you said it earlier. Actually, yeah, Anta Brew. A N T E. It's E. No, it, we're, I'm anti the people that brew. Ah, no. <laughs> but here's the funny thing: if you're if you're getting our social media links from this podcast, that means you already spelled it correctly once. Because you correct. found the podcast. Yeah, correct. A-N-T-E-E-R. I imagine if you put A-N-T-I Broom, you'll get there. Mm, even if, at this point, still, if you type Antibroom correctly spelled into Google, it still is a little hesitant. I think I did. It's like, a- did you mean Antebellum? Yeah. I think I did a, a, uh, excuse me, A-N-T-A. And uh, it was like, nope. Antebroom. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I don't know what you're talking about. B-R-E- so. I do A-N-T-W-H-U-M. A N T E, like well, that, this ain't gonna help people. It's a room. A-N-T-E-B-O. If you found us, you know where we are. We yeah. actually we could like spell. I know, like I listened to another one called Muscle for Life, and it's uh, spelled out F O R. And so he says, when you find me, it's Muscle for Life, Muscle F O R oh. Life, like as in not the number. Or well, we could right. do Anta. Anta Bruum. Anta Bruum. A N T E B R E W U M. Anta Bruum. Find us on Facebook. Twitter, Instagram. And we'll be on. And we'll be on with Website. Thrasher next next time, right? Cool. Oh yeah, yeah. We're gonna talk next month. Next month we have uh, the newest startup in Valdosta, Thrasher Brewing Company, the Very State cool. Bird. I gather. Yes. Yep. 
Brown Thrasher. Brown Thrasher. All right. Well, Jay Rice, thanks for coming on. And Thank all you. people out there in podcast land, we love you. Thanks for listening. Yes. And we will see you next time. Last cheers. You guys don't have beers. I do. We, we, cheers. We cheers. Woo! Woo! Thanks for listening. Peace out, everybody. <sighs> Mom, you made me mash my M&Ms. <laughs> <laughs> what is the <laughs> worst warm up ever? <laughs> it's a vo- voice thing. Yeah. I'm what sure. is the uh, what is the thing from like Anchorman? Oh gosh, I forgot. Yes. Lie, 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 lie. Scotch, scotch, scotch. I love scotch. I have many big leather bound books. <laughs> Sometimes you I, usually do. There is a lot of times. Like, yeah, a lot of times I'll tack like a blooper from before the show on at the end. Ooh, I'll make it extra funny and put that. <laughs> what the me saying that? Anchorman. No, mommy. Sometimes baby. I put a blooper at the end. Oh. <laughs> Take a peek behind the kimono. Um, how it works. I like how you just have Fargo ominously sitting here. Like <laughs> yeah, why is this we're, movie? We, we forgot to say we switched to a movie <laughs> podcast. I hope you watch Fargo. <laughs> but what about Frozen? If I'd never see Frozen, <laughs> it would be too soon. <laughs> There's no uh, Disney representative. Yeah. So. Uh, that makes the YouTube big sponsors. Weird, we just need to sell out to uh, Miller Bud Coors. Yeah, yeah. Get us whatever we need. If you're listening, yeah. XYZ Ventures. Uh, uh, man, <laughs> this, like, uh, I, uh, this new Shock Top might be the best beer I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> Shock Top Ginger Pretzel. <laughs> um. All right, shall we get started? Yeah. Let's do it. Say it again. No, no, the, my mama mashed my M&M's. Mommy all. made me mash my M&M's. There you go. Now you- Lee, Lou, Lali. <laughs> <laughs>